Hey, good evening. The Design Review Board public meeting of September 10th, 2015 is called to order. Please refrain from talking amongst yourselves and please turn off or put on vibrate all cell phones at this time. If you need to talk, please leave the meeting room. Anyone who wishes to speak, including applicants, is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker cards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff. Anyone who wishes to be re-noticed about a particular project must completely fill out one of the postcards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff to receive notice of subsequent meetings. Current Design Review Board agendas are available online at www.glendaleca.gov. A handout describing the procedures of the meeting, possible board decisions, and Design Review Board appeals is available at the table by the front door. Please note that all appeals must be filed within 15 calendar days of today's decision date. The chairperson may reorder agenda items at his or her discretion. And in this case, actually, our chair is not present, so we will be electing a chair pro tem, but I will call roll call first. Uh, board Member Benlian? Here. Board Member Charchian? Here. Board Member Malikian? Here. Uh, Chairman Mardian is absent, and it appears that Board Member Simonian is as well. So, um, is there a nomination for Chair Pro Tem? Um, I would like to nominate Mr. Charchian. I second it. All in favor? Yep. Aye. Okay. Mr. Charchian, thank you for assuming the role. Next on the agenda is report regarding posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall at or before 5 p.m. on September 3rd, 2015. Next item is oral communications. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. I have no oral communication cards. I don't believe there are any on the dais as well. No? No. I take that no. Um, and that brings us to this evening's Design Review Board agenda with three cases. I'd like to turn the meeting over to uh, Chair Pro Tem Charging. Okay, uh, we'll start with uh, the first matter on calendar, which is uh, PDR 1516692, uh, address 3540 Buena Vista Avenue. Um, and let's go ahead and have a reading of the. Yes, board members, uh, this project is located at 3540 Buena Vista Avenue in the Spar Heights District in North Glendale. The project was last reviewed on October 9th of 2014. At that time, the board made a motion to return the project for redesign. And prior to that, it was reviewed uh, June 26th of 2014, also returned for redesign. The project summary involves to demolish the existing one-story single-family house and garage in construct a new two-story 2,575 square foot single family house and a new 460 square foot detached garage. The site is 6,500 square feet. The staff is recommending that the board approve the project with conditions. The conditions that were included in your last motion are in your staff report and what I'd like to do is go over those conditions since you've reviewed the project twice already and if you have any questions uh, please let me know and interrupt me also I've pinned the sets of plans that were reviewed at the last October 9th meeting there to the left referenced as old plans and the new ones are to the right referenced as new as you can see, there has been a change in style. They've gone from the craftsman, as originally proposed, to more of a Spanish colonial revival-influenced style. So the conditions were, number one, to reconfigure the house to significantly reduce its sense of mass and boxiness. This may be achieved by reducing the area of the second floor, providing greater setbacks at the north and south facades, transferring floor area proposed at the second level to the first level and or other appropriate means. They have revised the mass on the second floor 
It was reduced in the new design. The second floor is set back approximately 15 feet from the ground floor. And at the rear facades, the two, it will be two feet from the southerly and northerly facades. The new design approach in SAPRAC provides appropriate massing relief from all sides and avoids um, uh, the boxy appearance that was referenced earlier and shown on the previous drawings. The floor area on the second floor was transferred to the ground floor at the rear, which helped reduce the mass and the square footage on the second floor. If you recall, back then, the second floor square footage was uh, 1,100 and 56. I'll give you all the numbers actually. The first floor was originally 1,339 square feet for a total building area of 2,495. The new numbers, first floor is proposed at 1,680.50 square feet. The second floor is proposed at 894.50 square feet. So the new total is 2,575 square feet. And they're still under the FAR, but they are very, very close. They're at 39.6 or 7 percent with the new proposal. Second condition was to significantly reduce the overall height by reducing floor to ceiling heights, lowering the foundation wall height and or other appropriate means. The overall height was reduced from 26 feet 6 inches to 24 feet 11 inches. And the item number three, if the craftsman style is retained, they wanted some modifications, the design of the house has changed to reflect a Spanish colonial revival style, so that condition no longer really applies. Item number four was to reduce the roof to provide simpler forms that are more compatible with the chosen style of the house. And it does appear to be simpler, the new design, and more compatible with the Spanish style. I provided a roof plan as well for your review. Item five was that the garage roof shall match the predominant form and detailing of the roof chosen for the house. And they have addressed that. The garage roof is a hip design and is architecturally compatible with the house in terms of its roof design, materials, architectural details. Item six was to reduce the size of the chimney to make it more proportional to the house and more compatible with the style precedent and um, based on the new design. It does appear more proportional to the house and compatible with the style of the house. Item seven was to step down the house, or excuse me, step down the height of the house from north to south to better conform to the slope of the site. And the front of the house, which is on the west elevation, shows that the north side at a slightly higher elevation compared to the south side, which would be consistent with the gradual cross slope of the lot. And item number eight was to provide consistent orientations for all site and floor plans and enlarge the drawings to, for better legibility, and they have addressed that as well. Additional conditions and consideration that staff has included in the staff report Item one, to reduce the amount of hardscape at the front of the house around the front courtyard by introducing additional landscape and a walkway. Number two would be to revise the design of the right side of the front facade at the lower portion of the south facade to provide more harmonious proportions and better wall window relationships. Can you explain that a little bit? Yes. Where exactly we're talking? For example, <coughs> this area at the front facade uh, and on the south side, which would be the other one. The other one. this one. See that height and kind of small windows, they don't uh, seem very proportional with that facade. Uh, Windows seem to be very small compared to the height of the wall. I haven't seen a section. Have I you? didn't pin it up, and I will. I have okay. sections for you. I had. I have so many plans that I couldn't just put them all. Um, the section that I have a question about, which I didn't see, is: Am I reading this correctly? That this wall and this wall is the same wall, so this whole thing is just one. Mm -hmm. Yes. That okay. I believe so. Yes, right. and then the, the area. Uh, 
um, addressing item number one that um, yeah. I included in the staff report. You can see it better perhaps on the landscape plan. If you notice, here's the driveway approach. Staff please, there's, we'd like to soften this up a bit to have less hardscape in this whole area, maybe reducing this amount. Well, you can't really reduce so much of the driveway. You still have to keep at least a minimum of 10 feet, or they could reduce it to nine if they have a walkway included. But if you notice on the this rendering here, it just seems to be a little too heavy in terms of the amount of hardscape. So staff would maybe throwing out the idea of potentially introducing maybe a meandering type walkway that leads from, if they want from the driveway to the front door. But anyhow, the board may want to kind of discuss that amongst yourself. And the last item was to revise drawing to include all existing and proposed perimeter walls and fences, including their materials, and that those walls and fences be complementary to the design of the house. And the consideration was to consider depressing the structure further into the ground to help address the disproportionality tall first floor at the south facade. That concludes my presentation. Um, we do have some information that our deputy director would like to go over. And before I conclude, we have received numerous letters in opposition and one in support. Um, but I wanted to have that noted for the record. But he would like to now highlight some information regarding CEQA. Before we go to Mr. Loomis, uh, it's Mr. Loomis who speaks. Well, OK. Before we go there, let's uh, see if there's any questions from board members for staff as to what was reported. I Other think. Questions? Okay, please. Good evening, board members. Uh, the memo was passed out to you this evening, and there are extra copies over there for anyone in the public who would like to see it. It's a response to a comment we received uh, suggesting that the area is a historic district, and therefore um, demolition of this house should be reviewed under CEQA as it would be uh, considered a historic resource or contributing to a historic resource. And um, we reviewed this comment with our city attorney's office. And essentially, uh, the way that the, the law is written and the way the case law has developed with CEQA is that if there haven't been any surveys done of the area, the city cannot just presume that it is going to be a, a historic district. Under all of the uh, types of possible resources that are laid out under the seeker under which we analyze, uh, all of them presume that all of them require that there have been done some sort of survey which meets uh, standards set by the industry and under state the public resources code. And again, I'm not prejudging whether this area ever could become a historic district, but the fact that there's never been a survey done precludes us at this point from treating it as a historic resource under CEQA. Okay, thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to open the uh, hearing for the applicant. Is it Mr. Thibodeau to come up? Or, or whoever's going to speak for the applicant? Mr. Chairman, uh, my name is Patrick Ortega. I'm with. Uh, my name is Patrick Ortega, Mr. Chairman. I'm with uh, Goldberg Heller LLP, 1141 Cabrillo Avenue, Venice. We are uh, here as uh, the uh, project managers for the owner, and we'd like to make a brief presentation with the architect. But we'd like to stress that the uh, owner and the architect has worked with staff over the last six months or so to develop what the guidelines were uh, per the board's last uh, uh, conditions on the project. And we're still open to the uh, recommendations of staff or whatever the board recommends by way of an amelioration of the issues that have been brought up. Um, and we believe that the project complies with, um, well, I was here to address the CEQA issue, but that's no longer necessary. So uh, we believe that it addresses all the, the points the staff has uh, pointed out, and I'd like to turn it over to the architect to uh, make the presentation on the reasoning why we went uh, 
75 square feet above the prior uh, presentation, and that has to do with the movement of the staircase and the way the previous plan was um, far more economical in how it access the room, the bedrooms upstairs, and whereas now you have a, a dislocated second story mass to set it back, and you have a, a one-bedroom uh, location downstairs, the stairwell had to change, and that's the uh, reasoning behind the uh, added square footage. Thank you. Hi, my name's Robert Thibodeau. I'm the architect for uh, Tom Hines, uh, 3540 Buena Vista. And um, I'll keep it short, because we all want to move along. I think Milka and uh, Jay and uh, Mr. Foy did uh, really um, excellent job uh, helping us work out the, um, the suggestions that were part of you guys' last letter. And um, I have a couple of um, just sort of facts that I'd like to bring up regarding the um, what we tried to do to limit the, you know, move the mass down from the upstairs to the uh, lower floor and reduce the uh, the uh, sort of box, boxy appearance. So we moved 250 square feet from the second floor to the first floor, which was part of Milka's report. That's a 22% reduction. That was from 1,145 square feet to 894 square feet. Um, the setbacks were set back all the way around, and I uh, have... Diagram. So this is really how the second floor sits on top of the first floor now, and we've included cutouts because you guys wanted it. You used a word like undulating, I think, or um, varying on the outside last time. And so we did um, cutouts uh, to uh, further reduce the mass. Um, and the uh, second floor is set back 17 feet further than the first floor, and the first floor is 5 feet further back than the required setback in order to line up with the other houses on the street. We did add square footage at the ground floor in the back um, in order to get the extra bedroom because we basically had to take a bedroom and a bath off the second floor and move it down to the first floor so we could still get a three-bedroom house out of this. Um, when we moved the bedroom in the back, though, we also, um, because we were increasing square footage on the ground floor we knew that was going to be a problem with you guys so what we did was we chopped off if you look at the old design we had a fairly extensive covered front porch um, that was a wrap around so it went across the front and then it wrapped to one side and that was actually 361 square feet of mass so if you take the old square footage which was um, it says Take the old square footage, which was, uh, yeah, 13. Previous first floor was 1350, plus it had a 321 on the porch. We were at 1671. The current is 1680, but there's no covered front porch. The front porch area is open in this design. It's more of like a patio with a low wall. So really, that's only a plus nine in the square footage of the ground floor in terms of mass. So. We kept the mass sort of even on the ground floor and we reduced 22% upstairs. And then we lowered it. In terms of the lowering, I mean, we're happy to work with you guys on any of the suggestions you have. Um, the windows, if you want to work on the windows on the south side, we did keep them small just because we have a neighbor there. So we were trying to be considerate, but I understand there's also issues, issues of proportionality that Jay's worried about. So we're happy to. Um, Look at that with Jay if he wants us to increase the window sizes a little bit, no problem. And in terms of the uh, way the building sits on the ground, we took the high corner in the rear. The lot does slope about two feet from left to right over the pad of the building. And we located the slab eight inches above the ground, which as I'm sure you guys know is the code requirement for a slab is eight inches, unless you start going subgrade. So what we could do is we could push this below grade if we put a stem wall around there, and then we'd get that other side lower. My suggestion would actually be on that roof line that you see on the south side, that I could drop that roof line by, um, so if you look at the door, which is actually a side entry door, which is sort of typical of the Spanish colonial style, I could lower that roof line. Anyway, thanks, and uh, thanks for your time. Thank you. Any questions for applicant, board members? Okay. 
I'm now going to open the public hearing. We have a large number of speakers. Uh, I am going to ask that speakers limit their comments to, I believe I can go to three minutes, correct? Correct. Three minutes. Um, if you want to concur with something that's been said, I would ask that you um, concur uh, instead of uh, repeating so that you can add more. Uh, feel free to speak for the full three minutes. Um, but we, uh, uh, in the interest of time and um, ensuring that everyone is heard, um, please limit your comments to three minutes. Um, so I will take, uh, in no particular order, um, Patrick Ortega has he spoken. Spoke. Yes. Miriam Jennings. And uh, you have not indicated on your form, are you in favor or in opposition of the project? Opposition. Thank you. Good evening, Design Review Board members. My name is Mary Ann Jennings, and I live in the Spar Heights area, just a block and a half from the proposed um, reconstruction. I'd like to read a letter. I'm on the board of the Montrose Verdugo City Spar Heights Neighborhood Association, and our president has written a letter to you uh, dated September 9th. It says, Dear Design Review Board members, we formed our neighborhood association in 1997 with a mission uniting our neighbors to protect our quality of life. One quality of life issue we follow is neighborhood integrity. We want to ensure that infill projects and alterations to existing homes are sensitive and compatible ordinance are compatible with our neighborhoods and comply with our local codes and ordinances we have reviewed the staff report elevations and plans for this project online and have discussed the project with the immediate neighbors while we understand that the new plan has been somewhat responsive to the condition set by the Design Review Board at the previous hearing, we believe the new proposal is still too large for the neighborhood. In fact, the new plan is larger than the previous plan in the terms of square footage, and the FAR has increased from 35.5% to 39.5%. While there are other sizable homes in the Spar Heights neighborhood, they are significantly larger lots. We believe the project to be inconsistent with the North Glendale plan which states sorry number one excessively large buildings that dominate the surrounding neighborhood are discouraged number two larger homes should be sensitive to the existing context and not have a monumental appearance number three when building on a sloped site or street, locate the taller portions of the building on the upslope portion of the site so the building profile reflects the topography in both directions. In addition to large, in addition to being too large for the neighborhood, the proposed plan specifically does not follow the contour of the slope of up the hill as stated in point three above. Instead of the bulk of the building being on the upslope portion of the house, as the North Glendale Community Plan requires, it is evenly distributed. Another of the most problematic aspects of the new design is the south-facing wall, which has not been su sufficiently broken up, set back, or relieved, so it remains massive and boxy. In closing, our association believes the proposed plan to be incompatible with the Spar Heights neighborhood in terms of size and mass, and we believe it is inconsistent with the North Glendale plan. We urge the Design Review Board members to consider the comments of our association and the immediate neighbors and require the necessary changes to the proposed plan to make this project compatible with the Spar Heights neighborhood and consistent with the North Glendale plan. Sincerely, Grant Michaels, President. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Ms. Jennings. Um, I will now ask um, Matthew Ulancho. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, at, uh, on Lincoln Boulevard. Matthew? Okay. Hi, uh, Matthew Olesino. I work uh, for the architects. I was uh, part of the design uh, team for the project. And uh, as a part of the uh, process of uh, coming up with the layout of the uh, project, we 
tried to take into account other houses in the neighborhood, we found that there are several houses of similar size and mass that we've designed in that uh, along that block. And um, we feel that we made an effort to uh, be consistent with uh, the scale of new construction in uh, in the general neighborhood uh, that the project is located in. Uh, we also feel that um, we did try and take into account some of the issues that you brought up in terms of the slope of the lot uh, in analyzing uh, the design of the project, the layout, and uh, the, the slope of the site, which is really fairly minor. Again, where the building sits, it only slopes about two feet. It's stepping down the building substantially over the course of two feet is, is actually kind of difficult in terms of a layout. And uh, we feel we made an effort with the, the roof lines to accommodate that. Um, but uh, in terms of the overall massing, we felt that it would be a uh, detriment to the design to make a, a more of a grand gesture uh, over such a small drop. Uh, I'm sure I have a question. No, go ahead. Just a, for my understanding, uh, what do you understand when somebody says significantly um, when that statement is stated in the, uh, how would you take that? I, I think, uh, significant well, in, well in, in our experience uh, working throughout Los Angeles and Los Angeles area, uh, a slope lot for, uh, uh, for a lot of other parts of the city and even parts of Glendale is more substantial than two to three feet over the course of the whole lot. Um, I don't know the intent of uh, you know the person who wrote that part of the code but um, you know in terms of stepping a, ho a whole house down over a uh, span of you know, drop of two feet uh, I didn't we didn't feel that that the, the, the part in the code about a slope lot necessarily pertains to this lot in particular we did make an effort to to you know, reflect that the lot did slope somewhat, but I mean, as you can see on the um, on these uh, images from the from the internet, um, you know, the, the the pad of the house is fairly even; it's fairly level, and it's uh, most of the houses along that block. The pad for the houses is fairly level. Thank you, um, Mr. Ron Scott. Um, Mr. Scott, you did not mark your form um, in favor or in opposition. Can you state opposition. which one? And I'm going to mark it for you, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you. been bad. Um, uh, and also, I've, I've, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I've neglected to ask uh, people to state their address uh, on the record. Is it their name, waived? Their okay, their neighbors. Sufficient. All right, then. Committee members, Ron Scott, I am a neighbor on Buena Vista. And my conscience drives me to the podium tonight because in the past I've had the opportunity to come before this committee and voice my opinion and I didn't do it. And so tonight I'm here just to simply voice as a neighbor my opposition to this because I think it's a bad decision. Simply because it conforms to the law doesn't necessarily mean that it's a right decision. Um, so I would hope uh, that you would give serious consideration to the neighborhood and the values that we have in our neighborhood. Um, I think it's way overbuilt and uh, I would hope that you would vote not in favor of this um, project. Thank you, Mr. Sarkin. I have a speaker's card from Mr. Thibodeau, who's already spoken as the architect. Um, next speaker is uh, Tom Hines. And I yield my time. Project manager. Um, okay. Um, I, to, no, I through the opposition first. Uh, um, actually, you, uh, chairman is fine. Um, uh, you know, I. It doesn't indicate here that Mr. Hines is um, part of the, uh, the uh, 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 project. He was asked if the applicant could speak at the beginning. He yielded that time to you at the beginning. So I'm going to. Uh, unless there's an issue, uh, we can bring you back later on but um, for a rebuttal, but I'm not going to entertain this speaker card at this time. Um, Michael Morgan. Mr. Morgan. 
Morgan. Good evening, Commissioner. My name is Michael Morgan. I live in the Spar Heights area. Spar Heights is a unique area in the city of Glendale, developed between 1922 to 1930. Its characteristics help define how other areas in Glendale were to be developed. It may not be a historic district, but is definitely historic. The North Glendale Community Plan, which is the official guide for development within the neighborhoods such as Spar, Spar Heights, state the plan is to be used by the Design Review Board to shape positive change and balance to the unique character of the neighborhood. I urge the commissioners to follow what the plan has crafted, not what is appropriate in Los Angeles. The plan states, additions, new construction are to be sensitive to neighborhood scale, page 93. We are now on our third DRB meeting, while at the second DRB, the oversized plans were returned for redesign. So what do we get? Even larger at 2,575 square feet, close to the largest house in Spar Heights, and that is very important. Even bigger than the last plan by 80 square feet. So return for redesign as too big, so let's make it even larger. Tell me, what's the logic? The FAA, well, it's gone up also from 35.5 to 39.5. Surely not sensitive to the North Glendale plan on neighborhood scale. The North Glendale plan guidelines 4.5B, page 94 to 97, should be followed, and again, they do not. The DRB needs to adhere to the North Glendale guidelines or all that work crafting the North Glendale plan will be waste. As mentioned at the last hearing, there is nothing wrong with the design except that it is the wrong site house for this historic area. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Joe Landlor. Lawler. A uh, Lawler. Yes, hi. My name's Joe Lawler. I live at 3541 Downing Avenue, the property directly behind 3540 Buena Vista. Uh, thank you for your time. <clears throat> I think we'll discover that there are a few salient points out of the North Glendale com Community Plan that are going to come up time and time again. I hope you'll allow me to address them in my specific way. Uh, I respect the expertise of the city staff. Uh, I am troubled by this recommendation. Uh, this design conflicts significantly with the North Glendale Community Plan. I will focus my four comments on the area that I think requires the most attention, which is the second floor. Number one, with an FAR of 39.5 or 6 or 7 and a square footage of 2,575 square feet, this structure is maxed out in both of these sensitive measurements. Additionally, this massive structure appears to be on a riser or pedestal, which was discussed earlier. The community plan states excessively large dwellings that dominate the surrounding neighbors are discouraged. Number two, with a virtual shear height of almost 23 feet, the southern wall sits on the minimum nine-foot allowance for a driveway. With only a minimum two-foot second-story setback, the south-facing wall dominates the houses to the south and from the street, and the community plan states new development additions should be sensitive to the mass and scale of adjacent development and the context along the street. Number three, <clears throat> the mass of this second story, especially of the southern half, pushes into the negative space provided by the one-story house next door, thus eliminating our view of the Verdugo Mountains, which we've enjoyed for 25 years, diminishing our quality of life and our home's value. The applicant has added a large, second, a large ground floor addition to the uh, footprint, but has retained an only slightly smaller second story from the original designs. The community plan states larger homes should be sensitive to the existing context and not have a monumental appearance. And number four, the second story does not conform to the significant slope of the hillside. Our community is defined by our mountain slope. In fact, the roof line accentuates a peak on the southern third of the roof line, which then tapers down to the north slash upslope end of the structure. Community plan slates when building on a slope site or street locate the taller portions of the building on the upslope portion of the site, so the building profile reflects the topography in one or both directions. Very clear. Our request is that given the maxed out FAR and the maxed out total square footage and the numerous conflicts with the second story uh, has with the North Glendale Community Plan, that you please return this for project for a redesign that eliminates a significant portion of the southern half of the second story. And request a design that the remaining portion uh, clearly follow the upslope in accordance with the North Glendale Community Plan. To say that the current design addresses the community plan's clear direction on any of these points is to barely give this wise document lip service. Thank you for your attention today. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
Um, I get a second chance to mess up your last name. Uh, Liz uh, Lawler. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the opportunity to, to speak tonight and voice my opinion. Um, my husband and I asked ourselves, you know, have the applicants responded to the DRB's conditions and were our concerns addressed? And so regarding condition number one, the building width at ground level is the same at 35 feet, same as the first plan, the maximum it can be with only two feet of articulation on the south side of the building. The articulation from the ground to the uh, roof is minimal at best and the result is a massive south facade as stated. Regarding condition number two, the height appears lowered to 25 feet. However, this is measured to the lowest point and it has not been made clear how the lot will be graded in construction so the actual height could be higher. What is clear is the applicants were unwilling to compromise on their 10 foot ceilings as suggested in condition uh, number two. In fact, all the ceilings uh, appear to be vaulted so they appear to be even higher than in the first plan. Regarding condition number seven, the peak of the new building has not been moved to the upslope side of the structure as the DRB directed them to do at the last review. The new structure clearly does not follow the topography of the slope slot lot. Landscaping choices were also discussed in the October 2014 meeting. The applicants have now moved the inappropriate Brisbane box tree to the easement area next to the utility pole in the rear of the lot. This tree grows 45 feet tall and will interfere with the utility lines. It is a very messy tree which will require continual trim, trimming and cleaning up on my property. We're asking the applicants to change their uh, rear uh, corner tree selection to a smaller, uh, neater tree. To summarize, the width is still maximized, the height is still too high, five feet higher than the two-story house to the north. The total square footage has actually been increased, making it potentially the largest home in Spar Heights. The FAR has been increased to 39.5%, nearly at maximum. This, by most standards, would not represent a reduction in mass and scale, and in fact feels more like resistance than compromise. Our view of the surrounding mountains is still mostly blocked by the second story. By measure of the North Glendale Community Plan, the project still does not conform, and with all due respect to Milka Toledo and her staff, uh, by your own conditions set forth in the October 9, 2014 DRB meeting, the project has not adequately addressed the conditions. I'm asking the Design Review Board to not approve the plan. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lola. Okay. Um, I do not see any other speaker cards except for Mr. Hines. Uh, Mr. Hines, would you like to take your time or, or uh, send your designate? Yeah. Thank you. With regards to the, uh, the tree issue, the landscape architect has uh, reviewed that matter and has opted for this tree under the view of his expertise. Uh, we've hired uh, professionals that. Do you have documents for that? Yes, we do. It's a new, we presented the new. Uh, that one over yeah. There? Yeah. Yeah, uh, and this is a professional uh, premier uh, landscape architect in the area that is complying with all of the California requirements for drought tolerant plants, and is requiring and, and all the require uh, uh, guidelines uh, per the city of Glendale. We believe that this is a, a competent, professionally executed uh, uh, landscape um, plan, and. Uh, We'd like to be, uh, you know, compromising on some of these things, but it isn't up to us. Some of these things are mandated by the architects, uh, landscape architects, and the state of California guidelines on drought-tolerant plants. That's one topic. The other topic uh, has to do with uh, mass and scale. We met on numerous occasions with staff to address that. This board at the prior meeting stated that it did not have a problem with a house around 2,500 square feet, provided that it had a breakup of the boxiness that used to exist in the prior uh, floor plan. For that reason, because we couldn't accommodate the uh, recommendations of this board with the prior floor plan, we went to a, uh, a new uh, architectural um, plan 
the last point has to do with uh, view preservation. Under the state of California guidelines, the city of Glendale does not have, uh, as I understand it, a policy of view protection. We try to lower the roof's uh, 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 views as much as possible within the design constraints, but uh, the uh, applicant also has some rights, um, and uh, we hope that uh, you see that we've been very reasonable in, in the uh, process of uh, accommodating neighbors on all sides. In fact, the neighbors that are most immediately adjacent to this property, the neighbors to the left and to the right, have previously submitted and continue to support letters uh, or, or, or views of support on this project. We have this uh, neighbor in the back, uh, and we respect him and, 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 and her views, but um, we think that this is a, a, um, a plan that complies with the code, with the um, conditions that this board set out, and with its prior comments. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I have a question. Um, have you had a chance to review the 24 letters that we Until received? just now, uh, we were. As we have. Right, As right. We, have. we, we haven't. Uh, so, yeah, so we we did last time. No, both no. of us, we received this. Right, right. But we did last time prior to, on, on two prior occasions, we had an open house uh, for the plans. We came here with letters from the neighbor immediately to their left and the neighbor immediately Say to the open house where what well, meaning at the, at the at the house at the site uh with Have you reached uh, with, out to the community or any we tried the, but um, some of them are uh you know positioned the way they are and it's very difficult to have a conversation that that has in, that, that takes into account that it isn't us or Mr. Hines that will decide what kind of a tree goes there. You know, it's a professional Not necessarily landscape the architect. Not tree, but overall design. Right, Have right. you contact the homeowners association to for them to set up or generate a meeting with the community? We tried last time, and they presented a vociferous opposition, and they said under no circumstances, you know, would they allow something like this. Uh, and we understand that that is a view that they are entitled to have. Um, this is a view that, that they are entitled to have, and they have vehement and passionate positions, and we respect those. But our client is not asking for any variances. Our client is not asking for any modifications to the code, is not asking for any kind of leeway in any fashion whatsoever, and has bent over backwards, both from an architectural, legal, community uh, outreach, uh, to try to do everything possible to comply with the guidelines of this board. Thank you. Any other questions from the nope. board? Okay. I'm going to close the public hearing um, and uh, initiate deliberations. Uh, Mr. Ben Len, do you want to start? Sure. Okay. I can't speak much about the previous design since I wasn't on the board at that time, but I want to thank the staff for putting this really well done package together so I can make the comparison and see if the applicant really looked at those conditions and those comments. And after looking at it closely, I see that the applicant did... Initially, I was surprised and I was disappointed when I saw all the comments about reduced boxiness, reduced mass, reduced size, and then I compared the square footage and I saw that the square footage grew. grew. And uh, you mentioned earlier that it's due to stare or due to some some programming issue, but I don't know if I buy that because you could you could have lost some of the programming or make some some rooms smaller just to accommodate that. But looking at the other things, which are like ma mainly the mass of the second floor, I think the architect and staff did a really really good job at reducing that because. If you look at the section on the if you look at the section on the old design and you can see the the second floor it was just right on top of the first floor and the second one is just set back 17 feet 17 feet and over here that's the rear yeah okay yeah okay still the front over here so just set back like a few feet and then all of a sudden set back way more so we have a front uh, setback of, I, I believe, 30, 30 feet and 17 feet. That's 47 feet. So the second floor mass is like set back 47 feet from the street. I think that's pretty good. And I think that's addressing this issue. 
in terms of uh, in terms of the design style they also did a good job at the changing the style I mean this the, the initial design wasn't wasn't rich and it, it just it, it looks like it didn't have character I mean the second design is much better I agree also with staff about the windows the window proportions need to be worked out but uh, other than that, I think they've addressed the conditions, so I think I'm in support of this project. Okay. Mr. Pillian, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mardian? Oh, Maliki. Maliki, oh, geez. Is out. <laughs> I specifically <laughs> underlined it, too. And you I have the same hairstyle, but... <laughs> um, well, um, first of all, I want to thank you. I think uh, this is the beauty of having a dais, open dais, and everybody has their have their opinion and how they approach this. Um, I believe I was the most outspoken one last time, and I still am going to be the most outspoken one. Um, in overall, I want to um, I want to comment in regards to uh, conforming to the law and conforming to the design review. City of Glendale has a design review guidelines that uh, we obey by. Uh, planning and the building and safety um, follow the uh, zoning guidelines. Uh, we follow the design guidelines. Um, when I brought up uh, several of these conditions last time, uh, I was very specific in regards to significant reductions. And I can go ahead and explain each one of them and how I compare it and how I see it, how it's been addressed. Um, so overall, in a, in a big picture, um, you know, in my opinion, I think one of the items that, um, or one or possibly two of the items, in my opinion, has been followed. Um, the first one, we suggested that as part of the reduction of the massing, um, you can go ahead and remove the second floor, place it down so that you can actually reduce the mass from the from the outside. Um, I was not implying to increase the square footage nor um, change the entire architecture so that you're forced to go ahead and start using large masses of volumes to accommodate the architectural style that we're, it's being proposed. Which, um, in, when I read this, it said, if the craftsman style, number three, uh, one of the conditions, the number three condition, it said, if craftsman style is retained in the new design, redesign the front porch, and so on and so forth. We did not suggest for you to completely change the design, nor go with something completely different. The significant reduction, in my opinion, for number one, for the mass and boxiness, what we had originally, what we had was um, we had the square box, basically, obviously, we, we had undulation of the front facade. We had different forms of roof, which it was fine, but there was, it, they were not consistent. And one of the issues that we had was that the large um, front facade, that it was basically overwhelmingly two-story volume. What we wanted to do, or what we were suggesting for the significance, was to move the second floor back by removing the second floor down, which we have. But what you ended up having, which you can see on the rendering, is that you, you ended up having a, a solid two-story base facade, which you addressed it really nicely in the back. You addressed the back by breaking that up, breaking that, that two-story volume. And unfortunately, it's also on the on the taller portion of the building, which is on the higher side of this, uh, of the, on the on the south side, I believe. So to me, that significant massing reduction was not done, especially from the front. Also, um, you know, you're you're looking at the facades, the changes of the details, and so on and so forth. I'm not sure I understand this window placement and how it is. If it's a, if it's it's drawn as the these windows are, I can see it, and I think it's they're wood windows. But the front ones, these, the way it's broken up, more of a Mediterranean um, aluminum style. So I think there's a lot of if you go back and look at the 
details in the revival, architectural revival, there's a lot of ways that you could have addressed this, creating a lot more um, softer details between the mullions, between the windows. So that could have been some, some sort of a stone or some sort of a small little pilasters or something that the detail would have been a little bit more interesting rather than a solid plaster box. Significantly reduce the height. But when we say significantly reduce the height, we don't mean to, for you to reduce the slope so that you're lower here. Second floor, you've only reduced a foot, which is, I commend you for that. But the first floor, you're still at the 10 foot. Okay, you want to keep the 10 foot, that's fine. You know, I have no question, I quarrel about that. But when, you, when you're keeping the same plate height from front to back, and when the, when the whole thing is becoming one giant tall space, and you're not really allowing me personally, I'm not gonna talk about my colleagues, for me to understand how this thing has been significantly reduced. You could have, you could have gone with the, um, you, you went with the hip roof, you could have gone with the gable roof, lower this, open the roof, have an exposed vaulted ceiling, so you can have that interesting stuff, but you can still utilize a lot of the, the height, and, and therefore you could have reduced that height in the front. You could have had a foot lower or a foot and a half lower in the front. You still could have enjoyed the, the high ceiling in the center of the building, in the center of the room. But you didn't do that. And as you come around here, I mean, staff mentioned this. Look at the, look at the size between the top plate and the windows. If this thing was reduced to eight feet, you would have had a much better, in my opinion. One of, the, one of the arguments or one of the reasons was for the, um, for the stairs. Well, the stair, and I, don't, I hate to get into the inside of building, but if the stair is because one of the reasons that the increase in the square footage occurred, well, if you lower that two feet to eight foot, that the stair mass, the stair length, would have been shorter. So then, therefore, you would have, or if you didn't want to reduce the height in this level, I understand. What you could have done is you can push this in, not that, not have this opening, move the kitchen in more, and then push this bathroom and everything else. So you would have the same kind of a detail that you would have in the back. So, so there's a lot of ways that you could have addressed that, but it wasn't done. You chose to, to break up the, 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 the two-story mass in the back, which no one can see, and, and not address the front of the building. You know, at this moment, you know, I'm just going down the list. I think, in my opinion, one of the interesting parts about this building is how do you address the garage door, to be honest with you. One of the ways that you've done is you rounded the, rounded the corners, um, added some interesting door details, and, and I think that gives a little bit of a better character, but unfortunately that was never carried around. My opinion, I don't think uh, many of these major items have been met. Um, the reason that I've asked if you've approached the um, community, and, and a lot of times community, uh, you know, members are difficult, and, and you know, it just has to be persistent. Unfortunately, when you have almost the entire neighborhood coming and speaking against the project, especially when you get all these letters, um, I, I don't know if it can be solved over, a, you know, a, a quarrel of. Uh, over a quorum that, that we, we're, we're talking, and, and I, I don't think all of the design issues that I see still exist. Now we have other issues. Before it was a different issue, in my opinion. Now we have a different style of architecture. We have a different style of issues and how to address these items. So in my opinion, I think we still have a lot of redesigning in, my, uh, in this project. Okay. Thank you. Do you have a correction to make? Oh, wait, I'm uh, sorry, we, we can't. We, the, the, the public hearing is closed, sir. The association was never invited. Sir, the, the, the public hearing is closed. I cannot open it up to, to hear you out on that issue. If uh, um, time permits, we'll, we'll see if we can do something. But at this point, uh, I want to make my comments. Uh, uh, just be clear, there's no requirement for anybody to meet the association. It's just the courtesy. I've always recommended, I've always suggested that when you have a... Um, contention on the project, uh, it's wise for the outreach to the neighborhood be able to 
provide anything and be able to be available for community to come out. And that's the only reason that I'm saying. I'm not saying to solve the issues. I'm not saying, but it's just not going to solve 24 letters that I have, especially the homeowners association. So, okay. So, um, you know, I'm 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 going to leave. The, I was a participant in the last uh, DRB hearing. I'm going to leave that design behind us and focus on the design that we have here. But before I do that, I want to comment on on a couple of things and just for uh, some for sake of clarity uh, for the for the large number of uh, people in the audience and also the viewing public. Um, at DRB, we have to focus on the rules that we have for the design review board. Um, there's been many comments made on uh, the overall square footage um, and other comments about the appropriateness or the historical nature or not historical nature of the property. We have to focus on the design aspects of this uh, project. Um, and uh, from that perspective, we look at mass and scale, not necessarily square footage. Um, you could have a much smaller um, project, but it could be much more massive in appearance and it could not fit in the neighborhood because it just doesn't look right from that from the design perspective even though it might be four or five hundred square feet even smaller um, I uh, join my colleagues and, and some of their comments and I want to highlight the areas that I think are problematic from for, for myself on the front entry area the massing uh, here that's not broken down is problematic at the entry um, it's this wall. We don't have a cutout of it facing uh, directly. Perspective. Best would be way it would be here is the perspective. This this massing here um, is is too much in my opinion. It it negates uh, where we were trying to go. Um, I think this um, needs to be addressed. Although I think it can be addressed with some conditions of maybe taking that back, softening it like the back has been done, um, adding uh, maybe a, a feature of bringing the roof line over. Um, to kind of break that volume. Um, I think that that is one thing that needs to be done. I think that the um, hardscaping uh, is an issue, as, as staff has mentioned, because that front uh, uh, porch area um, adds to the, to the mass. You do a lot to reduce mass by going to the second uh, story, but again, you add it back in uh, with this feature. Uh, I think you can reduce this maybe curve it around a little bit so it's not square to be more in line with the uh, architectural features. I don't know why we have the handrails. Um, it's three steps, so it's not required. Um, so I think there's a lot you can do by softening with some conditions in the front. Um, as far as uh, the overall uh, uh, attempt by the architect and, and the owner to um, address a lot of the c conditions, um, I believe that some of uh, uh, the conditions have been met and there's been a good faith effort to address those conditions. Do we still have some mass and scale issues? Yes, we do. Um, I would entertain some suggestions as how do we can maybe so, um, soften those, but I would uh, currently I would be in support of uh, adding some additional conditions, but not maybe a necessary redesign. So um, I would entertain a um, a conditioned approval if if I can present my conditions and if everybody's okay with that then we can go ahead and um, and I will be very specific because I think by being very general and generic of, of the condition last time we weren't specific so one condition is that to lower the front the first low uh, first level to eight foot ceiling plate height Reduce the building at least 10%. Consider reduce the, uh, the entire square, square footage. footage 10%. So it will bring it down to 2,200 and change. And this, this I, and I'll be I'll be on on record saying that I have no issue with having the 2,500 or change square foot. I have no issue with that. The only reason that I'm reducing to that number, and I'm coming up with just a hypothetical number, is because the massing is not there for me. The massing is still large. It, and, and it doesn't, I, I'm not 
suggesting that that square footage will come out from the back and needs to be coming out from the area that is most visible to the public. Um, the third condition is that um, the front roof shall be um, redesigned and uh, gable roofs would be um, reconsidered, not considered, changed to possibly gable. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, gable roof should be changed to hip roof um, and lord, obviously. Um, details between the front windows should be implemented more in keeping with Spanish Revival architecture. Just the front windows are all of them. Front windows. Um, and as Mr. Charchin suggested, to reduce or remove the handrails and introduce some softer details around planter um, guardrails or other elements that is consistent with the Spanish revival. And this is based on a return for redesign. In lieu of return for redesign. Oh, in lieu of return for this. Or, or are you suggesting that this be for... I, I would like to see that, yeah. I would like to have this. We can't have a motion to return for redesign. This is the third time that this project is before yes. you. Therefore, you would either, A, have to approve it with conditions or deny it. That's interesting. Yeah, this is, this is one of the, the reasons, one of the suggestions I had is I think, I, regardless of how many times it's been up against, uh, up with the design review board, my views on it, uh, and Mr. Uh, views were that were uh, more in support of the uh, project than not, um, I still have some serious reservations of mass and scale. Um, and I think you addressed some of those in but, your... I mean, it, it does, your these are just hypothetical numbers. I mean, it can be... It, they can they can figure out a way to reduce the height, you know, create some ins and outs, and they don't need to go to that extra square. I mean, this, these are just numbers that I'm throwing out because su suggesting that it's significant reduction was actually a 75-square-foot increase. <laughs> no, I, 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 no, I... So... Yeah. And, 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 and I better understand you now because when you were giving uh, these uh, uh, percentages and so forth, I was uh, suggesting, well, thinking that that can't really be worked into a condition um, right. uh, here at the dais, and it was a redesign type of issue. Right. But how about, uh, uh, how about providing staff with some specific direction as to what the conditions are uh, because I think the applicant other than also the suggests square footage other than the square footage um, I need to the height is very specific um, because I don't think um, I, I don't think without giving them the the specific number they're gonna play around with the whole notion of let's reduce this an inch here or reduce there and that's it's significant but the point is that the project is a massive project in this community, period. Uh, that's so my goal is to be able to fit this building in. I'm not telling them, I'm not telling them they cannot build this, but they need to be consistent with the, with the neighborhood. And right now, as it's designed, it's not. Very specific. So it's up to them. I mean... What I see, I think, by doing certain things m may actually help them achieve that goal and not walk away from the project. Yeah. Um, just so we can see if we can find common ground on mm -hmm. this. Um, on, the, on, the on, on the windows, I, jo I join you on the window comment. Uh, I think that they need to be reworked to be... Um, more in line with the with the Spanish revival design, and obviously the handrail, uh, uh, handrail, and also uh, lining up. Uh, I would I would entry. also take that to the yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, do you would you join in those comments? Yes. I would I would also add one more comment in the windows. There's some um, on the south elevation. I'm not sure I understand these cross. Are they like wrought iron crossbars that are placing? So if they are, then how would they be placed over a wood sill? Um, usually those are placed 
um, attached to the plaster, and, and th those details are not a okay. common. So since, I would, since staff doesn't know, should we? Uh, would you ask I, to open? I mean, I'm just. Um, I don't need. Uh, if it is, then if it's a wrought iron, I would suggest for for that to be visited because it doesn't make sense. You can't have a wood sill and then have a wrought iron coming in front of it. You usually have a plaster and then the wrought iron. It just consistent detailing and I think that was one of my bigger issues where there I wasn't telling them to redesign the project I was telling them to be consistent with their design and that's that's what I'm seeing here as well whereas if they're using the Spanish Revival let them go and I mean it's just so simple I mean I can google it right now and come up with thousands of different details and examples so I think consistency is the name of the game okay um on the reduction of the uh, first story, AC, um, the applicant indicated, uh, the applicant's uh, uh, architect indicated that they would be open to reducing the overall height by going subterranean and boring uh, and dropping that building, right? So would that uh, be the redesign element or uh, the, the, the issue condition that, that's fine be placed such that we can have this at what is this at right now two two We're foot 20 just under 25 right now and 28 is the last the, the issue the issue that it's not it's not the it's not the um, it, it's first of all it's the height overall yeah. height okay I'm um, um, I, I, I need this to be lowered, but yeah. one thing that I'm having, as, as staff has mentioned, see the distance between the top yeah. of the window and yeah, the, the sill point. And that, yeah, if they do that, it's still going to stay the same. Sure. And I don't want them to increase the window height so that they're, they don't have a, like a six-foot window so that they, they have the consistent. It's just a matter see, of yeah. placing the plate height lower and working with some. And it doesn't mean that... Possibly they can lower this section, move this forward, push this out, reduce this, do Helps all kinds proportion. of things. Yeah. It, it just it putting a, a flat 10 foot plate all around, it's not what Spanish Revival is about. Yeah. Nor, so, nor so going, going and dropping it like a foot or a foot and a half uh, and maybe reducing it. Fine. And, would, and that, would that address your. I think I think addressing that proportion there is is somewhat of a, you know a, a without without lowering the plate height it's it's not gonna they're not gonna achieve that um, I mean they can lower the building that's fine let them lower it it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything they'll, they're gonna create more issues for them but uh, for themselves but um, it's just keeping that sill Plate height is, okay. is the issue that I'm having. So can we can, so can we condition that uh, uh, for approval, or do we, are you still thinking that this is a redesign? Are you is I mean, there's so much to redesign. That's the thing. So. I have some new information to share with you. Okay. Um, so we did a little research, and because since the last time this board reviewed the project, it's been more than six months. They submitted a new application. It's a complete redesign, so we will treat this as a new first-time submittal for this application. So, therefore, you can return for redesign. I would like that better because then the, uh, uh, instead of reaching out to the community, they can come here and see what we're, we're looking at. I think that would be a better choice for everyone, in my opinion. So in, if that's the case, then I will be very specific um, so that this way they have a direction. So there's no kind of a gray question. Right, because technically it is a new technically, application. Yeah, it is a new application, right. So essentially, square footage, obviously I've suggested, but it's not specific. I'm not saying to be very specific. I'm just saying to, to lower the square footage. They can lower it without compromising any of the uses. Um, and they can they can remove or they can reduce the length of the stairs by remove, lowering the plate height. Therefore, they have more room to play around within the inside rather than having the stairs cutting into the family room. 
and again, I need to get into the building because they suggested that's what I'm saying. Uh, I would highly recommend looking into this two-story volume. I would suggest highly to look into a, a better example of how to address the front end, front end of the building. Um, the windows chosen are, you know, I think definitely wood with muttons and proper mutton dividers. You know, I would take these cross um, buttons out, just be more consistent with the detail. I would get rid of these and possibly introduce something that, I mean, there is really a nice opportunity to make this building look really nice. Um, lowering this, creating a um, hip roof, lowering this, working with some of these, bringing this down so that you don't have the plate height. Um, possibly in the back, you know, maybe rather than 10 feet, maybe bring it to nine feet, I don't know. I mean, these are just, I'm gonna sit here Okay. thing, but. Um, so um, in that case, I will entertain a motion. And I will, I will. Uh, um, so we have a lot of conditions. Right. Um, I'd like to, between Chris and I, Make I sure may have we repeated myself a couple of times, but let me. I'll, I'll start. The biggest issue here that we're looking at is mass and scale. Um, so these may be repeated, but this is what I found. Address the front end of the building. Um, that seems to be consistently an issue. Lower the first uh, floor level. You know, to and this was one possibility to eight foot plate height. Reduce the square footage by 10% to 2,200 square feet. We backed off of that, but what we're looking for is a reduction in the square footage um, that addresses this mass and scale. Right. But it may need. 2,500 is not a large home, but it is the largest home in the community, in the neighborhood. Um, However, if However, with the massing combined becomes very big. And if they, the primary thing is to look at also uh, varying the plate height, which could be a way of solving that problem um, so that it's not just a consistent right. plate height across that would, on each that would, floor. That would solve a lot of these um, elevation issues as well. For example, you know, from the, that section that we're talking about in the front, that whole section can be lowered to eight, and the front of the building can be lowered a foot with the, you know, the hip roof and so on. So do you have all these variations? So the, of the front and the south elevation in particular, where the, you know, because the south elevation gets that sort of head-on uh, view from the side. Um, at the front roof, um, it should go from a gabled roof to a hip roof. Um, and I may repeat these. I mean... Already, That's my Look suggestion. Yeah. Consider that I mean, as, I would, I would as a way highly of, consider, consider that uh, as a, a way of doing it. Right, right. Um, remove the hand. Oh, let me go here for this one. Review the details of Spanish revival in general. Um, the south elevation. Revisit how the wrought iron details are placed over a wood sill. On the window proportions and details of the space between the head of the uh, windows and the roof. Um, look at possible solutions such as pilasters, uh, but in general, look at different ways of um, introducing Spanish revival solution. Uh, wood windows with uh, muntins should be um, used. Um, going back to the um, hardscaping um, at the front entry, um, look at the hardscaping. You know, it adds mass to the entry um, feature. Reduce that and add more landscaping. And I'm not sure if I covered the handrails, but also look at the handrails, either eliminating them or making them more consistent with the Spanish Revival. Uh, Possibly detail. lower them to maybe 24 inches or lower them rather than that 42 inch high and uh, maybe widen them and create some, um, introduce some tile work or something. And so just 
work with the with the style. I mean, there's a lot of examples out there that it can be really done nicely. Uh, did I? If I may jump in, um, I think uh, Ms. Gardy sort of touched on this, but the suggestion I would make for one of the conditions that I heard very pretty strongly was to, I would phrase it as maybe lower and vary the eave lines uh, of the roof on specifically the south elevation. Right. Um, since we're seeing right now they're all the same, and I think your intent is to have some variety so the pier is less strong. Um, also, the comment about reducing the square footage by approximately 10 percent, I think, is a suggestion. I also heard that that should come from the areas most visible to the street. Uh, it, it, that's where the mass ought to be I mean, reduced. It doesn't, do you wanna... it doesn't have to be. To, it can be 1 percent. It can be 2 percent. It, it doesn't. I, let me put it this way. It shouldn't. The, the new proposal should not increase in square footage. It should be either the same or less than what it was okay. originally proposed. How's that? Okay. <laughs> oh, um, I also had um, front-faced window placement and style of windows. Choose more pre appropriate details. Okay, so that seemed to cover it. Um, one um, other item, without opening the um, for the architect to speak. Um, if they're planning to put any gutters, I would suggest for them to look into the placement of gutters and downspouts and exterior lighting. So those two should be part of the, the, the return package. So gutters should be uh, indicated right. and exterior lighting also shown. Okay. So I will uh, entertain either a um, motion for redesign uh, based on those conditions or a motion to approve with those conditions for staff and I will be looking for a second I, I, I have motion. a motion for return for redesign with the conditions we write do we want to include any of the conditions that were included in your staff report yes all of them yeah. and the consideration okay okay so the motion on the uh, is for a redesign with all the conditions mentioned and also all the conditions in the staff report I would need a second I'll second it. You'll second it? Okay. I'll bring it up for a roll call vote. Okay. That was a motion by Board Member Malikian for return for redesign and a second by Board Member Benlian. Board Member Malikian? Yes. Board Member Benlian? Yes. Chair Pro Tem Charchian? Motion carries 2-1. Okay. Okay. We're going to move on uh, to the next matter, but uh, let's entertain a two-minute break in the proceedings as some people might want to be exiting. Can I get a water? Sure. Would you have a cold Diet Coke if you want? Oh, there is? Okay. There yes, is. I do. Um, so if you want, would you like a... Uh, no, I'll have just the cold water. Tell Thank you. you. <laughs> I don't know how cold it is. That's pretty. Oh, Are you oh, goodness. Goodness. Is it? Me too. We do have ice if you'd like. Are you my notes are all over. Oh. No. Well, are you going to do like Jay with pipes that have been sent to me? Yeah. Not today, Could but you, early um, next week. Yeah. Could you give me a copy of yours too? Because. Are you sure you can read? Well, I had the same copy. We have to make sure we got they, they, well, they can, they yeah. can do, um, new so they can do whatever they want. Okay. It's just a suggestion. Okay. Let me, can we get, have a, oh, here it is. Okay. So, okay. I mean, sure, we'll take another break. Take this many, many, this many, yeah. this oh, I know I couldn't keep up with them. Unless I could take them down right now. I mean, if you want, you can kind of extend it. We'll take another, we'll take another, we'll take another, we'll take another. Her plans are on top of my plans as well. Yeah, we're doing okay. About the square footage? Yeah. No, you didn't want to go for it. But it'd be nice just if we can make it home by 10. Yeah, we will. It was something that he kind of. I want the big one. Pardon? Words, yes, right. Yeah, I that's that true. Whole, no, but actually, note over number three is going to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So these are all. <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> one at a time okay, is right. So starting here. Okay. Yes.
Okay. Um, Actually, the date has to go back on the bottom. Oh, there it is. There there it is. is. Okay, so we're back on live. Uh, we start the uh, hearing, and we're going to go to the next project for this evening, uh, PDR 1516198, 1350 Western Avenue. Um, do I, I don't have a speaker's card from the applicant, do I? Is Ms. Uh, the owner is going to speak in for the okay, uh, Mr. Alexanian? Staff report. Armin? Yes. Please come up to the board. Do you want me to do a staff oh, report presentation? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I apologize, sir. I forgot the staff report, so give us a minute. Please I'll be quick. To start the report. So, um, this project is located at 1350 Western Avenue. The project does involve the demolition or was demolished of an existing single family house and the construction of a new 2,312 square foot one story single family house with a detached 546 square foot garage located on an 8,350 square foot lot. So you may be wondering why is there no house there? That was going to be my first question. Okay, so what happened was um, earlier this year, a building permit was issued. The project at that time was a proposal of less than 700 square feet addition at the rear. Staff exempt exempted it over the counter because it was within the exemptable parameters. And during construction, the building inspector noted that more than 50% of the combined exterior roof and walls of the house were demolished, which was not part of the scope of work. The applicant or the property owner is here so he can explain why, but I believe my understanding of when I met with them, I believe it was termite issues and it just kind of took off from there. So that's why we're here today, because it is a new construction. And so, therefore, uh, they're proposing not exactly, but um, more or less the mass and scale consistent to what was originally there. Um, still maintaining a one-story house and um, still maintaining a house that's more or less Spanish style. The conditions that staff has are included in your staff report, so I won't go into the entire analysis of the report unless you have questions, but condition number one was, and staff again is recommending approval with conditions, with a condition to revise the window detail to maintain the traditional frame slash opening relationship and avoid a recessed border around the new frame that all downspouts and gutters be clearly depicted on the elevation drawings, that an appropriate designated trash area be shown in the site plan, as well as an appropriate designated mechanical equi equipment area be shown on the site plan. So far, uh, we've received, to my knowledge, one letter from the Northwest Homeowners Association, and they do comment on the design and um, some modifications that they would like to see on the project, so if you haven't done so already, I um, encourage you to read the letter that was submitted by the HOA. And unless you have any questions for staff, I am available to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Um. I have one. I have one question. Um, is the covered patio uh, included in the square footage in this project? The one at the back. Yes, the one in the back. It's included in lot coverage, not in floor area, because it doesn't have four walls. It only has. Actually, it's open. So therefore, technically, you can't live in covered porch that is missing one wall. Could it change in the future? They'd have to come and get a permit, and we'd have to review it to determine if it complies with zoning at that time when they come in for a permit. Okay. And my second question is, uh, have, has applicant worked with staff 
on the uh, or ornamental details for the uh, project and this. Uh, they did meet with staff. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to ask the applicant at this time, Mr. Armin Alexanian, to come up and spe and and. Uh, Go ahead and, and uh, speak to us. Um, I'm assuming that you're in favor of your own project, so I'll mark that for you, as it was not marked. You have, um, as the applicant, we're going to limit your time to five minutes. Please go ahead. Good evening. Uh, my name is Armin Alexanian. I'm the owner of the property at 1350 Western. So uh, when I purchased uh, Mr. Alexanian, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but because that is a, a demolished lot, will you give us your actual address for the record? Uh, 329 Raymond Avenue. Landale, California. Thank you. All right. So when I purchased the house, I was going to do a small um, addition and the remodeling uh, to move in. And what happened, uh, the contractor made mistakes and demolished the walls that he's not supposed to. So we ended up going to the design review board. Uh, so uh, the architect designed a new house that uh, of one floor house, Spanish style, that looks great to me, and then it fits to the neighborhood. Uh, so I hope this new house will get uh, approved by design board, and so we can continue with the construction. Thank you. Um, I have a quick um, question, Mr. Um, Alex. Yeah. Um, we got a letter from Homeowner Association, is wondering. Um, uh, what type of a, is it a one um, is it a two piece clay tile roof or is it just a one piece um, what type of a roof system are you proposing so I, mean, I see a, it there but I yeah it's a tile tell. roof uh, is it a clay tile roof is it a composite roof that it is look what does it mean the cloud roof? okay yeah. um, Okay, then we'll specify, and then the, if you're going with that, then we would make that an appropriate tile room. Okay, okay. tile room. All right. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for the applicant? Okay. Um, the next speaker card I have is from a uh, Levon Arse uh, Arsenian. Good evening. My name is Leon Arsenian. I live in this neighborhood for 30 years, and I'm in support of this project. I saw the picture of this house. It's really nice. Uh, it looks very nice. And uh, I can see one year, almost one year, this, there is no house. I understand there was some mistakes. The construction or someone did a mistake. So it's break my heart to see this empty space all the time. I go to three times on this street every day. So when I see this space, it's really very bad. So I would like to ask you to approve the project as soon as possible, that we can have this neighborhood really nice. Because it's under construction for a year from now, plus it's going to be probably another year. It's going to be a very long time. Please, you know, do something to prove. And I'm in favor, because it's one-story building. It really looks nice. And it's not bulky. It's not a box or something. So please prove it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, seeing no other um, speaker cards on this uh, submission, I will go ahead and close the public hearing and uh, initiate deliberation. So, um, would you like to start? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. So, I think I think it's a it's a modest. I, I think it's a well designed project. Uh, I think it's it's an example of um, a. a a, a design that fits within the neighborhood, so I think I have no objections to the project itself. Uh, I would like to comment on a couple of minor little things that I would uh, I would recommend, and if it's a condition, it will be a condition. Um, to address uh, the homeowner association in regards to the windows, uh, I think the window is already set in. They have a detail for that, so I just wanted to, and, and I think staff mentioned that as well, but they already have that in their detail, which is A, detailed A and A3, which is already reset, uh, and a two by four, and then, so, so that's, that's taken care of. Um, the second um, comment that I would, uh, or, or suggestion I would have is that rather than go with a, um, I will just specify that it's a two-piece clay tile. 
um, a, a, a true Spanish tile roof. So it would it would be a um, more of an appropriate um, uh, roof material. And lastly, um, even though it's not visible from the street, I just want to quickly comment on the back patio area. Um, I think they've introduced a nice detail on the front porch with the wood post and the wood beam. I, it would be much nicer um, to soften up that back area, uh, be able to open that up, especially, and, and I think it was a mistake on the section that you've insulated that roof, which it's an open space. You don't insulate an open space. So uh, if it's not conditioned, you don't need to insulate it. So, so I would probably open that patio um, with the walls and everything rather than create that bulk mass. Um, rather than that, I would just use some of the details that you've introduced, the post and beam um, in the front, and use that as, as your basis. That's a consideration, but definitely I would, um, you know, um, look into or I think it's a mistake. Again, I'm kind of inclining to this, but um, there's an attic vent in an open space in the back, so that should not be there. Um, an attic space, or uh, I mean, it shouldn't be any. Uh, it shouldn't be enclosed space with insulated and all that stuff. It should be just open. What sheet is that on? Um, the section. In the section. Um, section 1A585. Will that be something building code would probably... We should it would, would, it would be, but, you know, dropping a ceiling, insulating an open Probably. space, it's unnecessary, so just might as well open it up, remove those walls, and put some nice wood post and beam and create a nice covered patio rather than a... You know, and then if it's an enclosed area, just might as well build it out of a square footage and just build it out. And I don't know if mm -hmm. you can, so, so make it make it an enclosed space. So. Yeah, I think I agree with Mr. Malikian. It's a modest and simple project. I have one recommendation for the eastern elevation, where the two restrooms are. The looks like there's a little bit of a recess there. It looks to me like it's just it's about six inches probably. They can make that a little more, maybe like a foot, just to, to give it a little more character. I mean, six inches, it just looks... Is that on A3? Yeah, or A4, A2. A2. I see, yeah, I see it. So that's it, and... Also, on the, on the same elevation, on the eastern elevation, those two windows in the front area, I mean, the symmetry is not there for me. I looked at the floor plan, and I understand why you guys put them there, but if you can rework this, this portion, I think it'll look nicer. You're asking for symmetry? For symmetry, yeah. There's, there's no symmetry there. And I'm sorry, I, which elevation are you looking at? Looking at the east elevation, the front portion. Where the chimney passes? Yeah, where the chimney. Two windows here. And you're asking them to be symmetrical around that facade? or yeah, I guess I'm, just this facade seems to me like... To adjust those the, proportions? Just to adjust the yeah. proportions. If we could have some flexibility in that, since it's shared between the bedroom and a living yeah. room. The chimney would appear to be centered on the living area, which, yeah. so. Yeah, I looked at the floor plan, and I guess they did their best, but if they can look at it one more time, it would be good. And I agree with Mr. Malik, and the back porch needs to be, like, opened up. It, it looks like it's a room that's going to be converted later on, so <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we're going to be on, on the same page on this one. Um, um, Mr. Milliken pointed out what I was uh, concerned about, which was the back porch looked like it was built out. Just add, you know, some ventilation, some AC ducts, and 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 that's really not, uh, you know, something that uh, I would personally. Can they, uh, can they add that square footage if they want? Support. So I think the far. Um, I'd have to look at the numbers one. because this is in District One. They're only allowed thirty percent. I mean, if they can, might as well just do closing. 
if that if that's their if that's their intention. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I am more concerned about the fact that we had a square box in the back. You have a, a, a good uh, Spanish character in the front, um, very minimalistic. Uh, uh, but appropriate design, and then you come to the back and you have a square box. Um, I, I think that you need to introduce some elements uh, that Mr. Mulligan mentioned. Um, I'm, a, uh, I'm in complete support of the actual Spanish tile roof being uh, uh, used, um, and uh, my only um, stylistic uh, design question, uh, and, uh, and I propose it to staff and I propose it to my colleagues, uh, is I would like to get a little bit of feedback on the ironwork um, that is there, and if, if you uh, believe that that is uh, within the within the general design of, the, of, of uh, uh, fitting within the general design of this uh, home, uh, I am of the belief that it's a little too contemporary of a design uh, to fit. Other than that, I would join in the other um, conditions and would suggest uh, approval of the project with conditions. So, just looking at the numbers. Uh, they'd be over their FAR if they were to turn that into floor area. They'd have to reduce it. Yeah, they're at 28 point something, so. Adding that would put them roughly at 31. So um, I think that maybe one of the conditions would be that applicant be given, uh, you know, the design review board uh, uh, guidelines that uh, indicate the approval as to our design needs to be maintained. I believe it's specified for a five-year period, right, so that we don't have any surprises down the road from what we look at is from a design perspective here today. Do we want to review conditions? But that's a code. Sure. Uh, well, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, what I, I think that the applicant should be provided a copy that, that would be in our zoning code t in Chapter 30.47. It does talk about maintaining the approval for five years. Okay. So I would uh, ask that staff literally hand him a copy as okay. part of the package. Okay. okay. So what we have is to um, use a two-piece clay tile, which would be more appropriate for the Spanish-style uh, character. At the back porch, um, soften up how that looks by opening up the walls um, or removing the walls, remove the attic space, and um, maybe use the post and beam details that were used in other portions. I mean, they can keep the same same thing, but it just you know, reduce the pilasters and around the. Um, at the eastern elevation, um, you want to increase the six-inch recess to uh, maybe a foot um, and look at the two windows at the front area. Possibly we were rework them for a little more symmetry, um, but at the same time consider what the uses are in that space. Yeah. Um, and also review the ironwork um, to be fitting with the Spanish style. That was actually a question I had for, for um, my colleagues. I didn't hear any feedback, so that's not a, a condition. That's just a recommendation at this time. Which one was that? Ironwork. Last one, ironwork. The last one? Okay. It's mm -hmm. a recommendation. Okay. Right. 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 So have support from just a consideration, yes. Uh, if I could request that we can add the issue about the windows. The symmetry of the windows on the east elevation to a condition, or, or I'm sorry, to a consideration, because that recommendation at this point is a little vague to understand how we would actually implement that. We can work with the applicant to see what we can do to achieve a better symmetry, but without it being precise, I'd be worried about make, uh, making that a condition. Our board members in uh, yes. support? Yes. Okay. And also a condition to hand them the uh, literature. Uh, section 30.47, yes. I believe it was. Are there any staff con uh, recommendations or conditions that haven't been read? And do we want to include the comments and considerations and conditions yes. in the staff report? Yes. 
and I'll move to approve the project with comments and conditions. For a second. I second. Okay, we'll call it roll. Okay, call that roll. was the motion to approve the project with conditions. Board member Malikian? Yes. Board member Benlian? Yes. Need a second. And Chair Pro Tim Charchian? Yes. Motion carries 3 0. Thank you. Okay, um, I was advised that we need a two minute recess so that we can change the board. Maybe so a little bit more longer. Than maybe a, a little longer uh, recess. Uh, we'll go back on as soon as the boards are up. We need to change out the boards on the back. So we'll take a recess.
Okay, we're back with design review board. Um, we're going to go to the next matter in the ca uh, in tonight's calendar, which is um, PDR one five one zero seven four six. The address is three three zero Wonder View Drive. Um, I am going to ask staff to read the report. Okay. Go to speakers after. All right, Chair Pro Tem Charchin, board members. The case before you is to demolish the existing single family residential um, unit and construct a new two story, approximately 7,300 square foot single family dwelling with an attached four car garage on a 2.3 acre hillside lot zoned R1R floor area district two. The lot has an average current slope of 66% project includes a swimming pool and a deck constructed on the lower level be below the house and site improvements will involve 2,367 cubic yards of cut which is an increase from 1,590 cubic yards as previously proposed and 151 cubic yards of fill which is a decrease of 215 cubic yards of fill from the previous project. What you see before you is technically a first time submittal for final review because it has been greater than six months since the original project presentation to the DRB. The original project was submitted and reviewed by the board on October 23rd, 2014, at which time the board voted to return for redesign with 10 conditions. Um, I'll just bring the attention to the board members that the plans are set up so that you ultimately see each set of plans. The old plans are highlighted in uh, the pink label and the green plans are side by side um, with a green label. So that is the distinction between the old plans versus the current plans being reviewed this evening by the board. In terms of environmental review, um, following the required 20-day review period, a final negative declaration was presented to the board at the October 23rd, 2014 hearing. Because the project was not approved, the board did not adopt the negative declaration. Uh, the negative declaration was updated to reflect the current project details and the grading calculations, and it was submitted as part of your staff packet. And so you will need to make a determination on the negative declaration before you approve the project. If you choose to deny the project, obviously it would be, uh, you do not have to act on the negative declaration. Now the staff report included both the current staff report and the previous one from the, from the October 23rd hearing date that was much more detailed than this one. This one ultimately just reflected the changes that were made between the two projects. Um, in brief summary, in terms of site planning, the proposed site plan is ultimately in the same location as the previous submittal, though with minor variations to address the design review board's conditions. As noted in the original staff report, the proposed site plan reflects the lot's current topographical features and grading, with the new house proposed in generally the same location as the existing, but within an enlarged footprint that conforms to the contoured building pad on the site. The existing driveway will be resurfaced and will lead to the proposed four-car garage with two tandem spaces that's actually attached to the north side of the residence. The new pool and patio deck are proposed on the first existing landscape terrace below the building pad. And the pool deck has been somewhat reduced in depth and width in comparison to the previous design so as to better relate to the hillside and to address the design review board's comments. Except for this yard area, all other areas on the lot are unoccupied by the drive and other areas unoccupied by the driveway and house will remain sloped, ungraded, and or landscaped. Meanwhile, aside from the front-facing driveway off of Wonder View, the house remains oriented towards the rear, and that would be towards the views of the city skyline to the southwest. In the response to the Design Review Board's comments, the existing pad is being graded to a depth that allows the upper floor of the two-story project to remain essentially at the same level as the existing house, with the new lower floor underneath. This results in the new roof elevation being the same as that of the existing one-story residence. Due to the lowering of the building pad and additional grading, 
As well as the location on the lot and distance from Wonderview, the two-story structure will not be readily visible from Wonderview Drive. It sits below the street level, down and around a long driveway behind uh, currently the property is addressed as 300 and 310 Wonderview. It will remain visible from vantage points to the south. The staff report also addressed mass, bless you, mass and scale. Um, the proposed two-story will be the largest residence in the neighborhood, admittedly so. However, with the lowering of the building pad, in addition to its location on the lot and distance from and below Wonderview, the two-story structure will not be visible as noted from Wonderview Drive and will have little visual impact on this particular street. As discussed on the previous design, during the previous design review board meeting, the house will be readily visible and seen from the residences on, on McGinn to the south and the surrounding neighborhood below. In response to the board's condition, the applicant has specifically proposed additional grading and lowering of the existing building pad and has provided photographs to show that the project will not infringe on the privacy of the neighbors below on McGinn. By having the new lower level below the existing grade, the project would appear less perched on top of the knoll and more integrated into the slope terrain. The overall building height has been reduced from approximately 32 feet in the previous proposal to 29 and a half feet in the current one. The roof design remains flat, which further helps reduce any bulk or perceived massing of the project. The house design continues to be stepped back and terraced at the southwest corner facing the slope below and features staggered parapet heights in order to address the topography and break up the elongated massing. Second floor continues to be stepped back from the first floor along parts of the rear south elevation to comply with the hillside design guidelines. Ultimately, the unique site characteristics the building placement, the lowered building pad, and the design details may support approval of such a large residence on a 2.4 acre site. Last but not least, in terms of design and detailing, uh, the design and detail of the project has not changed much from the previous submittal. The proposed house is still designed in a contemporary style with a neighborhood that features an eclectic mix of architectural homes, many of which are either um, Neo traditional, and you'll notice in the photographs which I handed out to the board, um, range from one, two, and three stories. The house is proposed to be constructed basically of finished stucco atop a split face concrete base and would feature composite travertine tile, accent walls, aluminum framed windows, built up fascia parapets, and accent bands and metal railings. The flat roof and accent bands provide a horizontal emphasis along the elevations while the staggered building forms mimic the contoured shape of the building pad and provide recesses for balconies and patios facing the south. Uh, much of the exterior design focuses on the fenestration patterns and juxtaposed building volumes. And the proposed color contrast of the dark windows and dark and dark windows and doors with the white sills, the white parapet face and accent banding, and the tan beige stucco walls and split face block has been conditioned to be reconsidered to be a more appropriate color scheme in the hillside development and thereby de-emphasize the monumentality of the building form. Now, in regards to the, the 10 conditions, I'm going to try to do this really briefly because I know it's been a long meeting. Um, come up to the board. The first, the first condition was to maintain the existing pad and driveway and eliminate the proposed second floor and relocate these rooms to the new level below the existing pad. Final height above the pad should not significantly exceed the bridge height of the existing house. It's best to see this actually in the cross sections provided. You'll notice here this was in the previous proposal. Um, the existing slope, there was some grading involved, but ultimately the, two, the second story would be up above with a, a just the first floor plan lowered just a little bit, and they also had a basement recreation room to the south, or I should say below. Um, per the board's conditions, what they've done is that they've maintained, obviously, the existing building pad, and now, not maintain, I should say, that they've actually lowered the building pad, so they're essentially maintaining somewhat the existing roof line of the existing first story. So ultimately, the, the uses and rooms that were on the upper floor have now been moved to the lower floor. And there is additional grading, but in place of the additional grading, they've now sort of built the house 
and depressed it into that knoll so that it has this less massive appearance on the hillside. The second condition was to shield skylights in a manner that will limit its nighttime visibility from nearby properties if it is retained in the new design. Um, this is best seen actually in this particular skylight and in the new project it's completely been removed. Third condition was to reduce the cantilever of the proposed pool deck to reduce its mass when seen from below and make it more compatible with the topography and the hillside design guidelines. As you'll note here, this was the uh, previous pool deck and it has been both reduced in width and length. And you'll note here on the perspective drawing, this is what would be visible from below on McGinn. Fourth was to create landscape pockets at hillside slopes using low retaining walls to allow for successful growth of large scale plant materials that will visually buffer the house when seen from below. This was a comment made by um, the former uh, board member, Ms. Judy Palmer, with regards to actually having landscape pockets to provide larger trees. They've essentially submitted somewhat a similar landscape plan. Uh, no additional landscape pockets using low retaining walls are provided. The landscape architect asserts that the proposed landscaping around the pool deck and the house base will adequately screen the development from below. Fifth condition was to provide a site section that includes the houses to the north of the project site, which has been provided here, as you'll note. It hasn't gone through the, the residences to the north, but you, you do see the difference and uh, somewhat repeated here as well, so that the existing building pad up above for the neighbors at 300 and 310 Wonderview Drive in relation to the flat roof that is proposed. So it, the flat roof essentially so is the, lowered. So essentially the, the view that they would have from up there would be the, of the roof line uh, that they currently have. It would be less. more or less because the, the obviously the building wider. is is wider, correct. Um, the sixth would be to provide additional information via section rendering and other appropriate means regarding the visibility of the project and driveway as seen from the properties below and the, the project site on the north side of McGinn. The applicant provided, uh, and this was in your packets as well, essentially a, a, a site plan with arrows showing the location of where these photos were taken. And so I think I'm going to leave it to the applicant to explain why this particular photograph and drawing addresses this particular comment. But this is this was in regards to showing how is privacy affected with, for the neighbors below on McGinn. Seventh would be to provide information about the size and installation pattern of the travertine tile if it is retained in the new design. Um, the design was included, that detail was included on sheet A5. The tiles will be essentially two to three feet long, one foot tall, and will be installed with no vertical joints, only horizontal ones. Um, eighth, the eighth condition was to specify light-colored gravel roof rather than the dark cladding proposed if flat roof design is retained. Flat roof design obviously is being retained, and you'll note um, on both on the elevations as details, but also in regards to these perspective drawings that the colors have changed for the roof gravel. Number nine was to install an irrigation system throughout the site where required in order to irrigate the existing mature trees along Wonderview and on the downslope. So these would be the trees here along Wonderview and the trees along the downslope. And these are rather existing. I'm sorry that the, the server is down and that we don't have internet access because you'll notice that there are definite um, larger mature trees all along the, the different levels of the of the property as well as along Wonderview. Um, as you'll note in your sheets L1 and L2, the landscaping um, will be, the new landscaping will be irrigated. There is a notation on the same sheet that calls for the maintenance and repair of the existing irrigation system in the downslope area for the existing landscaping. There is also a note on sheet L1 which identifies the removal of any dead plants, trees, and shrubs the maintenance of existing plants, and the cleaning out of any loose debris in the concrete swales. Um, the landscaping does not specifically identify maintenance or irrigation for the mature trees adjacent to Wonderview property line, and this is being added as a proposed condition of approval. And last but not least, specify that all drainage 
will be conducted through internal leaders if flat roof design is retained and that is something that is noted on the roof plan that it will all be through internal leaders so um, those would be the 10 items that were conditioned DRB um, I would like to make note at this point in time, there were a number of letters in opposition the last time. Uh, we received one for this particular project proposal. This came from a Mr. Thomas Garson, attorney at law, representing the property owners at 300 Wonderview Drive, and this was handed out to all of you. The primary concerns was that um, they felt that the proposed negative declaration failed to adequately address um, any impacts that the project might have on the human health. And just we wanted the board to be aware that staff actually looked into these concerns regarding the additional, there was a request for additional studies uh, for the air quality analysis. Um, we ran the urban emissions model and actually I do have copies of that and this should have been included as part of your negative declaration. But if not, I have copies of it yeah, actually at hand to hand out. I didn't see. Did I not? So based on that urban emission model, and this takes into account both the demolition and the construction of the new project, um, the emissions are well below any AQMD threshold that would trigger a significant impact and would trigger mitigation measures for air quality. Also, um, Mr. Garson alluded to um, the request to do some sort of risk assessment for this new single family residential project. And risk assessments are typically only required for facilities that either use or generate hazardous materials would be considered quote unquote toxic hotspots. Those would be such things as refineries and whatnot. So risk assessments, you know, a new single family house that doesn't even trigger or come close to triggering any significant thresholds by the AQMD, AQMD do not call for risk assessments. So um, we just wanted the, the board to be aware of that. Um, there were no other letters received. I know there is, was a, a neighbor who I was in contact with and requesting back and forth information. But last but not least, as, as noted, you do have a copy of the proposed negative declaration. There were three letters uh, that were received at that point in time for the October 23rd. We have updated the negative declaration and the information with comments to those three letters. And so this is specifically in regards primarily to, to air quality and grading and whatnot. So that said, um, that concludes staff's presentation. I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Are there any questions for staff at this time? Ms. William, look at. Okay, um, let's go ahead and open the public comment uh, portion of the hearing and invite Mr. Edward Hakopian, uh, who's the architect for the applicant, to come up. Good evening, Mr. Chair and board members. My name is Edward Hagovian. I am the architect for this project. My address is 220 South Kenwood Street, Suite 210, Glendale, 91205. Suite 210. I would like to thank Vilja for the hours and hours of time that we spent to iron out all the issues with this project. And I believe the staff report is so complete that it doesn't leave much for me to say except that few uh, points that one of those is that uh, when uh, in the staff report it says that we have lowered the deck of the swimming pool uh, the main issue here is the wall that was exposed in the first design that is lowered drastically the next issue that when I was can I approach to this plant here that's right there, uh, uh, Mr. Bland, that's behind that coffee. Oh. 
There's a building that's right there we have to copy. Thank you. The pointer. Well, I was preparing this uh, renderings to show that how that swimming pool deck is hidden. I found out that if I show the all the trees, nothing will be seen. So instead of adding trees to the deck, I took most of it so that we can see that there is a deck there. Otherwise, the deck will not be visible. That's one issue. Uh, then when I walk to the lower street, this is where we want to do, build the house. Story poles are here. As you can see from that street, we don't see much. We don't see the story poles. The story poles are there, but it's not visible at all. I took this picture here from, uh, from this location that now is the deck, existing deck, and existing living rooms of this existing house. From there, this is all we can see about this pool. Now, at this location, we will not have any room because, as you can see, we have two-story high ceiling here. We don't have a room in this level. There is no floor here. So, and we have our, our, our bedrooms in this level, up, which is the uh, same level as the existing house now. So, and the direction of our view is, I have shown that in one of those. Mainly our windows from the bedrooms are looking in this direction. And that pool is That's the old here. Plan, right? That's the old plan, right? Yeah. Uh, it's the same thing anyway. The distance is, the pool is here and maybe lower uh, our living room, one level down, the house in front of that swimming pool, you can see that, uh, I would like to show, that, yeah, this is the house that is blocking this, this, this swimming pool. Even that pool will be almost invisible from this property, from any room. Uh, uh, by the time we add all these new trees here, completely block the view from the driveway to this pool. So to make a long story short, that pool, if it's visible now, which is this, then there's no way to see this, this pool anymore. And I took the picture of this house from the street, and that pool is is dead, and our story poles are here. And from this angle, we don't see anything at all. So the main issue is that if the, uh, the grading is increased, because that was the recommendation of the uh, uh, design review board to lower the building full one story. So the roof of the house that is proposed now is the same height as the existing roof of the existing house. Um, I don't know if uh, there is anything else for me to say. Um, for the letter that our neighbor has mentioned, for the dust, I leave it to the board. I think the board is not knowledgeable to respond to this matter. And if you have any questions, I would like to respond to that. Any questions from Mr. Agopian? Thank you, Mr. Agopian. Thank you. Uh, I will call up the next. There are no questions for you at this time. So okay. I will uh, call up the next uh, speaker. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Tim Berry. Good evening, committee. My name is Tim Berry. I live at 1940 McGinn Drive, which is uh, just below uh, this area. And uh, I, I have to uh, contradict um, some of these things. Can I give you a picture? Sure. Okay. This, this, is, this is the view from my house up that hill. And I know the color quality is not very good, but 
That, that you need slope. to speak into the mic. I'm oh, sorry. Thank you. That that slope is is granite. It's it's solid rock. These these trees are are very old and they're very few, and you're not going to do plantings on that hillside. You're going to simply have to do some kind of planters or something to to house those, and you're going to have to irrigate those, and you're going to have to maintain those. I, I would like to, and I don't even know if it's possible, formally request that you entertain a motion, come to my house, have a cup of coffee, stand in the backyard, and look up the hill. Can I approach and, and talk to you about exactly what this what this means? If you, if you, this is the you need to, you need you to speak, speak in the, the mic. mic well, the, the reason there's, a, there's an official record, and okay. we want to make right. sure that okay. there's an official record. This little point here that you may have seen in the picture is the tip of the house, the roof line of the existing house. Faintly visible are the uh, stringers they, they put up. Not my problem. I don't. Uh, it's not my view that's being blocked. However, that pool deck is going to be in the middle of this slope. It's, it's going to be, again, these are microphones, right? This, this distance, first of all, you know, yeah, two and a half acres, right? This is the workable size they're putting a 7,300 square foot house on. This, this is not a flat expanse of area. It's, it's straight up, it's virtually straight up and down. You know what I mean? This, I don't know how else to describe it except to say this pool deck is going to be in my face with parties and pool goers and, and, and you stand in my backyard. It's, I invite you. Oh, please, come. Have a cup of coffee. The other thing is, aesthetically in the neighborhood, it's, it's, a, it's a Four Seasons Hotel right there on perched on the on the hill it's not appropriate for the neighborhood four car garage the traffic uh, on that McGinn Drive is already outlandish I've had conversations with motor officers who who have been patrolling up there to try and ameliorate some of the some of the issues with traffic on that hill uh, you know you're gonna it, it, it you have to extrapolate out and say there's gonna be friends and visitors and other traffic besides the four cars in the garage and whatever else is parked on the street. Again, I, um, I digress. But specifically to yeah, um, you know, various recesses for balconies and padding er, er, patio areas facing the south. It's, it's just going to be right, right in our face. I guess that's it. But please, come by. Thank you, Mr. Berry. Uh, Eugene Smith. Mr. Chairman, gentlemen, ladies. Uh, my name is Eugene Smith, and, I, and my wife and I live at 335 Wonderview Drive. Directly across the street from 330 Wonderview Drive. We built our home in 1969, so we have a vested interest in these hearings. For the record, we continue to strongly oppose this project. The changes have made have not reduced the size. It is a very large elephant in a community not designed for elephants. My prior statement on the then proposed project stated our, our opposition based upon engineering, regulation, and precedent established over 25 years for this area, as well as other concerns. Subject to our prior statement, I will limit my comments to one primary issue. The size, scale, mass, design of the proposed project does not meet the compatibility 
requirements of Section 30.11.0404 of Glendale Municipal Code. We urge you to give careful consideration to our position and the issues raised. Please uphold the conditions and requirements of our tract for the benefit of all of the homeowners, not just the applicants. His objective is to recoup expenses on extensive topographic surveys and aerial photography for the hope of resubdivision. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, the last speaker card I have is for a Stephen, and is that uh, Ridinger? Ridinger, thank you. Mr. Ridinger. <clears throat> As we just established, my name is Stephen Ridinger. I live at 230 Wonderview uh, Drive. Uh, I'm three houses down under Wonderview uh, Drive from the uh, from the owner. Uh, my complaint against the proposed project is that the owner continues to illegally drain his property across my property with a temporary pipeline, endangering the stability of the slopes and canyon side on my property. The project owner and his architect have made no effort to correct this. Consequently, I believe the project owner will probably be non-compliant about meeting any building or safety requirements or taking into any uh, consideration uh, neighbors reservations about the project um, in addition uh, I don't think there's any other 7300 square foot uh, homes on wonder view uh, why do we need one if there's not any there currently uh, I don't believe the uh, project is uh, compatible it's totally out of character um, uh, you know, the landscaping uh, is going to require water uh, and, and in the type of weather conditions we have. I don't, I don't know if that's viable to keep those, that landscaping alive on watering two days a week, but uh, uh, you guys are the experts, I guess. So at this time, I'm opposed to the project. Uh, as the first uh, speaker uh, in opposition said, the the slope on the back side of that lot which uh, abuts my property is probably a 70 or 80 degree slope uh, so the fact that that there's no drainage uh, solution set up he's draining you can't see it on the map my property is to the right of that topo map up there he's draining with pipelines onto my property and my swales which i maintain and have to repair due to uh, a damage. And if anybody from the design review uh, board cared to get their feet dirty, I would invite them up to my property. I'll buy them uh, a canister of coffee, and they can walk around and see the, the erosion damage that's already been done up there. So uh, I, I don't believe uh, the, the current owner is a serious neighbor, or he would have repaired and removed uh, the uh, the drainage setup he's got now draining that steep driveway which when it does rain catches it all and funnels it down uh, across my property thank you thank you sir okay uh, mr. Uh, yeah. mr. Okopian. mr. Okopian, uh you have an opportunity for any rebuttal please come up if you'd like Uh, I have uh, several addresses in the uh, vicinity in Wonderview that they have large houses there. Like 137 Wonderview Drive is 6,756 square foot. 181 Wonderview is 6,154 square foot. It goes on and on. A little bit further, Rimcrest, 1970 Rimcrest Drive, 6,740 square foot. 1964 Rimcrest Drive, 6,283 square foot. So, yes, this house is larger than them, but there are houses that 
But those houses, they have, those houses that I mentioned, they have smaller lots. This one, as you can see, it's more than 100,000 square foot. Uh, drainage is a technical issue. It will be taken care of uh, during the process in the, with the engineering department. So uh, if it's neglected so far because the old house owner didn't uh, pay any attention to these matters, but with the new uh, engineered drainage system, even things will get better than what it is today. Um, Uh, I, I, I would like to know the neighbor that was complaining that the pool is right in his face. Which one of those houses is his house? Um, I believe that was Mr. Barry, and he indicated that it was a, he lives at uh, 1940 McGinn Drive. If they show me in the plan, if this is the one I'll that I... That. Please approach and show in the plan. Yeah. Oil houses. Uh, is there a house, is there a, something that shows, McGinn, this is my, I think this is my roof right here. I think this is the edge of my roof. This is the hairpin turn on McGinn Drive. And the picture that I took is from my house looking at this hill, that, that picture you have. So, Here's, so this is me. You have a arched. This actually, the topo probably, I'm sorry. You don't mind if I have to no, no. that. I would mm -hmm. like to know what is that distance between that house and that pool? Not far. If, if the street is, let's say the street is 30 feet wide, will you allow that 30 feet? Then it's probably 90 feet. Okay, thank 90 you. 90 feet from, from my house. All these trees that we have in front of it, it will block. Uh, by the way, uh, we have a landscaping plan. Beside the trees that you can see in the survey, we have a landscape plan showing that we are adding more trees. Yeah. What's he going to build? Adding more trees What's in front of the pool, to hold that? Yeah. Can I that so out? that will completely uh, uh, block the view of uh, that okay. that pool. Any other question, please? Uh, we, I'm going to ask that you stay up there because I have questions. If, if my colleagues do not, do we have, do, you, do do you have a sales report on this project property? Yes, we do. How's the? Uh, can I see that? Of course. Any other questions while we're on the solar work? Do you mind if I ask? No, no, uh, absolutely. Mr. Agopian, um, I, I don't need to know who the owner of the project is, but has the owner listened to the comments before uh, from the community? Has, has there been a community meeting since uh, the last DRB hearing on this matter, to your knowledge? Uh, I don't remember in detail of uh, what was the complaints, but we go with the con uh, conditions so, of the return for redesign, and we have met almost a nine out of ten of those conditions, except yeah. one that is our landscape architect had uh, objection with that condition that there is no need for to do that that condition number four. Number four. So the reason, uh, I asked that, the reason I asked that question is uh, last time we had this issue and um, pictures were presented of drainage uh, uh, issues on the existing property, a property that I believe uh, changed hands back in 2013. Yes. Um, and so, um, you know, here we are in 2015 and we're being told again by a neighbor that uh, the existing site conditions, which are incorporated into the design review uh, conditions, which you suggest that you will meet at some point in the future, um, but those existing conditions have not been addressed. So um, I would, uh, I'd like to find out if the uh, owner has made any inroads to doing anything on the property. We, uh, uh, as far as conditions. I know, we have a grading drainage plan, but. The final grading and drainage plan will be when this, uh, if this project is up approved, then we have to submit a complete drainage plan to the engineering department of the city of Glendale, and they will check that very carefully. Uh, uh, we are waiting for, we cannot do it now because we would like to do all this project together to have a, a very uh, calculated engineered drainage plan. Okay. Um 
We'll leave it that for right now. Um, do you have questions about this? And uh, by the way, uh, as far as I remember from the previous uh, design review board uh, complaint was the obs obstruction of the view, view of the house because it was tall. Now we are one level pushed it down, so there were, there were the multiple multiple consideration uh, recommendations and, and conditions last time around. So we'll, we'll address those in a few minutes. Are there any other questions for Mr. Agopian? Um So. Um, So as it is indicated in the um, SOS report, has has the SOS engineer reviewed the new revised drawings? Mm, no, I don't think so. It, it's kind of... But our engineer who designed the grading, he has revised that. Okay. Not the soil engineer, but okay, the Because they do address it. landscaping planting and they have some recommendations and how they do it they do rec they do allow planting but minimize the amount of irrigation so that contradicts of the type of planting and versus the the irrigation uh, the other thing that it's kind of odd is um, because you're excavating quite a bit um, bedrock is about three to four feet below the dirt so you're actually going to excavate into the bedrock. Yes. So into the bedrock, um, and it's pretty consistent throughout wherever that it was based on the sketch. So the landscaping that was brought up, so I just want to make sure that there, I mean, he does address the landscaping, but I don't know how he's addressing the over excavation that we're doing to lowering the building, how that's going to impact the bedrock versus the planting. So that's uh, the only question that I have. Uh, is your concern irrigation, too much of irrigation? No, well, that's one thing that he's recommending. The second thing is I just want I just want to understand that if he has. So he is recommending over not to over-irrigate. Fine. Okay. Uh, but drilling into the bedrock to plant the trees. So that's the only thing that I'm not sure if the landscape architect has reviewed that. Yes. And that is... Thank you, uh, Commissioner Malikian, Board Member Malikian, that is. That is that is the whole purpose behind uh, Ms. Judy Palmer's previous condition with yes. regards to providing those landscape pockets within retaining walls um, around the pool deck. And so that is something that we actually discussed with uh, Mr. Hagopian in mentioning you need to have a plan that actually has the landscape pockets within, you know, actual planner walls and so this is the response that we received from the landscape architect and that's what we're going forward with today but again that's one of the items that we actually are okay. um, that we included as a condition yeah. go, moving forward so okay. thank you no, no other questions for Mr. Agopian I have so. a quick question mechanical equipments going to be on the roof no it will be on the backyard any other questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Agopian. I'm now going to close the uh, public hearing and open up deliberations on this project. Um, Mr. Malikian? So, um, as I'm going down the list of the um, conditions that we placed for the project, um, and I'm reviewing the the proposed project, basically, in my opinion, I think the architect has met all the conditions. Um, lowering the building, that was one of our main concerns because it was blocking the view, and as also maintaining and reducing the amount of grading as far as removing the driveway. Um, I was aware that but once we push the building down, the grading would, go, would increase because of the lowering of the building footprint obviously the issue that I'm having you know we addressed one big major hurdle which is the overview and then blocking of that um, the neighbor above which was the mostly impacted in my opinion rather than the neighbors obviously there are drainage issues obviously there are other issues that uh, needs to be addressed um, and we have no control of addressing that but it would be addressed by part of the permitting process currently there are no controlling devices nor any um, any um, 
approving body reviewing any of the existing conditions, but whatever it's being proposed and constructed will be reviewed by inspectors, will be reviewed by um, the architect himself and the engineers and so on and so forth. So it would be addressed. Obviously, after the fact that if there are any type of a drainage discharge or any other issues, that then becomes more of a um, more of an engineering and other issues that it's out of our control. We're right here to review the design itself. As far as size and massing and scale, yes, it is a large building, but you're you're looking at a hundred thousand square foot lot. A hundred thousand square foot lot, you're allowed to have twelve thousand square foot. On the um, and I hate to compare projects uh, where you're going to the threshold of the limitation of the property, that becomes somewhat of a questionable item, and, and I start looking at the massing and the scale based on the FAR and the neighborhood. In this case, we're about 7% FAR. Unfortunately, it, it is the largest one around the neighborhood. But at the same time, we do have the design guidelines that we have to follow. We have the hillside guidelines we have to follow. Right now, currently, it's a flat lot, a flat pad, one-story building that it sits there. Um, when it was built, there was no design review. Uh, now there is a design review, and, and what, what the architect has done is followed our instruction to lower the building itself, and one of the options we had is to depress and push the building down. What it ended up resulting is that you, you basically have that flat pad lowered, and, and, and we have many other projects that we've addressed by making the, uh, the applicant follow the, the sloping of the hillside and be able to kind of nestle it back. Um, having said that, the only location that it's going to be um, the mass of this building is going to be visible is from McGinn and everywhere around that, but it would be only the top portion of the building, in my opinion. One of the biggest um, key points around this design is uh, are the landscape that is being proposed. Um, I'm glad that um, we looked at the SOLS report, and, and it does it does address the landscape, but at the same time, it does warn the um, the architect that it should not be over irrigated. So, um, not knowing the the specific requirements of the irrigation and other conditions of the trees, I would have to go back and rely on uh, our um, our landscape architect, previous landscape architect uh, Judy Palmer, and how she tried to address these conditions. Now, unfortunately, if that happens, then we're going to start seeing all these little pockets of retaining walls around to be able to plant these trees. Is that what we want? I mean, looking at the landscape architect drawing, it, it, we got planting all over the place to hide the retaining walls and so on and so forth. So if the planting works, I think a lot of these um, retaining walls and other conditions that are there, it'll be addressed. Um, but the big question is now that we've we've addressed one of the big issues which it was blocking the neighbors view and, and basically building up on top um, are we okay with the with the actual flat two-story volume that we're we're faced with may I make a comment oh. uh, we, we can't open it sir sorry that's okay. it that's it for now William? Uh, in terms of, uh, I wasn't here for the initial review, but looking at the reports and comparing both designs, it looks like the architect did uh, meet most of the conditions. Uh, in terms of the mass and scale, I don't have an issue with the, with the house itself. I'm having a little bit of an issue with the pool deck. Actually, after seeing that uh, photograph that uh, one of the neighbors provided, that even makes my concern a little more. It, it seems like this pool deck is gonna be visible, and it's gonna it's gonna look like an eyesore. Other than that, I don't have any comments. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to join my colleagues in stating that I think that the architect has done uh, a lot of changes to the project uh, uh, and has reduced the apparent uh, um, mass and scale of the project, but, but still maintained a, a large uh, building, okay? Um, I think that uh, the pool deck is uh, greatly reduced in, uh, in scale and the cantilevering effect that we were concerned about last time has been addressed. So I think that um, it is uh, uh, fairly back, but the landscaping remains a concern. Um, I support the condition that was applied last time to have these planter boxes design, uh, built into the project. Uh, they're not included uh, this ver in this version, but they need to be uh, uh, special dugouts, uh, as Ms. Palmer had recommended, so that it can support mature trees, especially since we're going into the bedrock. Uh, you know, trees don't grow on bedrock. Um, so we need to make sure that there's adequate soil. space and soil conditions uh, appropriate from that and appropriate species given the fact that over-irrigation is a concern from the soil report and obviously the drought concerns. Um, so with that condition, uh, uh, I would uh, be in support of the project moving forward. Um, I also I had a notated here. Yeah, um, just as a general um, thought that I had, and I open this up to my colleagues again, is uh, are we seeing uh, excessive railing now that we have the railing on the uh, driveway for security purposes, and then we have railing on all sides? Uh, and on, on uh, these rail features on the building, uh, like a trellis uh, and so forth. Is this, is this maybe too much? And is there a way to kind of tone that down? Any suggestions or thoughts on that? I might be uh, alone in my comments, so no, that's I mean, why. I, I, I think these are all just valid points. I think that the, the issue is that the, to having that flat, large deck around to be able to, you're obviously, for protection, you need to provide the railings, and obviously we can't have that. We can't have a exposed deck. So, but but the question is that um, what it does is it outlines the flat deck area right at that point, and allows people to come to the edge and be able to address that. Um, um, just simply pla placing the railing um, around the perimeter is is possibly a an opportunity for those pocket planters. For example, I'm just kind of giving examples so yeah. that you can actually place some planters there and and some large trees there so that it automatically, you can get rid of some of these railings, but at the same time it becomes more of a depressed ra planting of that section and you have these other areas there. My question to staff is what if for example, and this is just a hypothetical question, let's say we approve the project as it is and the planting as it's being proposed. When they start the construction, they start going there and marking the points for the plant uh, landscape uh, landscaper to go out there and plant these trees. They hit bedrock or they hit some condition, soil condition that they can't plant or they can't irrigate per soil engineer. How does that happen if they come back? I mean, where, when did this become an issue, and do we address it now, or do we have some some experts to come in? Unfortunately, we don't have a landscape architect, so unfortunately, we don't. Um, my suggestion would be to actually we have Anne Marie come in, and that's that was going to be my recommendation would be to actually modify the second condition, the second proposed condition, so that in consultation with the urban forester and in reference to the preliminary geological and geotechnical engineering investigation report submitted. So using utilizing the urban forester and the submitted geotechnical report, you know, then create landscape planners, you know in continuation with the condition that was said. Um, if, if the board, um, typically a landscape plan obviously then would be submitted for the permit check. If in terms of field 
con during field construction, they hit an issue with regards to the that, bedrock. That, um, I, haven't, I mean, no one has the control then over they, that. They would come back and we as would do it. As long as we have somebody that Correct. knows and it's their job to review and understand what is being proposed, what the souls report is saying, and so on and so forth. So at least we have some uh, recheck. Of, Correct. Um, um, we would be able to do an administrative modification. We just have the, the landscape architect on record submit a revised landscape plan. And my last question, and I hate to put staff on the spot okay. on this. Do you guys agree that this proposal meets the hillside guidelines? They accept, basically they have modified their, their footprint to address the existing curvature of the building pad. We've been working with them to try to address the terracing and the pockets and the recesses on the second floor. Thank you. So they have addressed certain points of the hillside guidelines. Uh, that's it, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, I'm actually lost. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, the reading of the conditions, or for the record, we do. We have staff proposed two conditions. The first was to consider changing the color of the parapet fascia and accent banding to another more earth tone, complementary color other than white. I did not hear any comments from the board in regards to the color scheme or the color palette. I'm not sure if that's something the board would like to consider or just eliminate that condition. Sorry. Um, I, I concur with staff. Okay. And the second one was, um, and this is the modification, in consultation with the urban forester and in reference to the, the preliminary geological and geotechnical engineering investigation report, um, create, land, create lands, have the, have the landscape architect create landscape pockets at hillside slopes using low retaining walls to allow for successful growth of large scale plant materials that will visually buffer the house yeah, and the I'm pool deck when seen from below. We have support for that, um, yes. Install an irrigation system throughout the site where required in order to irrigate the existing mature trees along Wonderview and on the downslope and maintain all proposed and existing on-site landscaping in good condition. We also need to uh, uh, modify that to include uh, in conformity with the uh, soil report. report. Soils report. Correct. Um, Mr. Bellion, you had a um, concern about the pool deck area. Do you have any solution or do you have any thoughts on that? I think if it's reduced maybe a little bit or pulled maybe a few feet to the back, that would help. Um, that would help the visibility so, so issue. So one, well. one of the um, thoughts, and I would, I would uh, you know, um, entertain a discussion on regards to that um, and it, it kind of carries over the railing that uh, it's been proposed around the wrought iron railing even though it may actually bring a little bit more mass to that I think a placement of some sort of a planter and be able to eliminate the wrought iron so that people would who are using the pool when they're standing at the edge it's somehow blocked um, I don't know how to explain it it's like is that is that something that we want to enter that concrete rather edge. than rather than just a complete open edge that we come in but then that would allow them to actually plant create a layer of a double layer of wall there which is a lower level having planting there and then having an upper level so you can actually buffer that a, a much, you know, rather than just a deck with a railing there. Just a thought. So I don't know. it would be a consider consider installing or um, a, basically a planter along the edge of the pool deck uh, I instead of, or substituting, somehow, substituting a planter somehow, for the wrought iron. Somehow creating a, a landscape buffer between the slope and... A, I, I'm say I think I understand where Mr. Malikian is going with this to have some sort of land, intersperse or substitute the wrought iron railing at the pool deck, and I think we're talking about the very extreme edge, correct? Um, 
with some sort of planter or planting elements with the idea that there are some sort of landscape maybe cascades on the downslope side to sort of disguise the deck and, a little and bit. And I think the same kind of as well as pe- can be carried up on the upper deck the upper so decks. that we don't have this railing coming down from you know, Wonder View and coming all the way down. It's like a 500 foot long. Right. You know, there's some breaking. <laughs> Yeah. Some different uh, as a as a consideration or a condition. It'll be your call. You're the one who brought it up, and now I'm thinking <laughs> would, about it. And I, I'm, I'm I would. Like, yeah. I, I think that there should be. A, it should I be. Think a mixed, I think definitely a consider uh, uh, a condition. It should be a condition that uh, there are some of those elements, and a consideration uh, for it to be carried over. I would other parts also. Of the I would also. I think we would want to make it a condition at the pool deck. Uh, I think that uh, you, we need to have a little bit of a break. Pool deck, and I would ma- uh, recommend making it just a consideration for the other. Uh, yeah, for, would you for the higher uh, for the upper deck along the pool deck? Though, would it be intermittent? Yes. Or would it be continuous along the entire edge of the pool deck? I think I uh, think intermittent. Uh, but I have a, a, one more consideration or condition or sure. in regards to the pool deck as well. Um, between the upper deck and the pool deck lower deck, there's a substantial amount of landscaping there. I think by pushing the entire deck back, and I mean that landscape area is—it's basically it's somewhat of a, yeah. May I? Come let up me. To let me. I, maybe I should move this is, forward. This is the survey. So, Sorry. So this is the survey. What so they're doing is, is they're taking out these trees right here to put the yeah. pool deck. No, no, I understand. But what I'm saying is, is that this area right here. Mm-hmm. That they're they're replanting mm-hmm. this. What I'm saying is there's a good opportunity for this to Push be pushed back. back and create a possibly a smaller little planter here, and then they can plant these trees. And this way, they've they've pushed this entire thing back it's at least feet. five to ten feet. And so you don't come to the edge there. I think in this case, if they push it back, they're going to create a retaining wall that's too large. I mean, too tall. No, just uh, keep a five foot away. Right now, it's like almost 12 feet away. So I'm just saying move this back here and be able to plant here, and then this whole thing can be pushed back. So this way, you're not actually... So go to like So essentially, six foot, it's just sitting uh, on the natural like break. Six foot, yeah. six foot, maybe six and a half That's foot. That's similar to what I was thinking. You, yeah. You're yeah. actually Push putting it foot. right on the natural grade, and they don't have any exposed section. and. And essentially, no one can see it, and they can put a railing there, this. and they can plant in front of it. So. All this under the hill. That's what I was thinking when I was thinking about the apple deck. So. Is that is that somewhat clear? I, th- I think I understand. Yeah. If the the wall where the the upslope wall of the pooled patio, right. Goes so, so in. take this whole thing and then push it back. Push it in. And in of fact, all this landscaping, keep about a five foot landscape there with the planter. That, that hillside landscaping would be less. The walls would probably be taller, but it would but allow it the be, building because to. Because you already have a railing. You already have a wall here. You have already a wall here. All you have to do is lowering this and bringing this back, and you're just covering that. Anyways, it's going to be covered with that. So, anyways, it's their landscape. Yeah. And they're covering I, I understand the intent. I think um, if I could recommend we do that as a consideration, given that there's, as you know, there's pretty significant building and engineering issues related to those kind of slopes and foundations. It's up to you. I just want to. I just want to address some of these. I mean, there's there's so much room. It's unnecessary for this deck to come out to the edge and overhang. Right. That's I, what I'm saying. So you can yeah, actually eliminate a lot of those issues. Definitely understand the intent is to take right. the outside edge of the pool patio, right, where the railing is, and bring it further into the slope. And, and some. And it can. With, I mean, I mean, I, I'm just sitting there and doing this. So, so this this can be actually the upper level, and this could be the lower level, and just. Kind of lower the deck area and plant and whatever it is. I think that would solve so many problems that I think it's worth it as a uh, condition. I don't either. And then we would we would phrase it as as much as possible uh, with you know obviously I don't we we're not going to dictate how much to take it back. 
That's that I think taking it back to achieve that would, would be. I think they have enough room to take it back, but again, it's up to them. Would I think they're really. Yeah, let's reopen the uh, 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 let's reopen the public the hearing um, and uh, have Mr. Hagopian come up and address this uh, issue. Mayor, make a comment now. Um, Excuse me. As far as we don't violate the zoning code with retaining wall heights, we can do it. Okay. So if it's a consideration, then we'll work with the staff to see how far we can push it. Are you comfortable with that? There is no violation. Yeah. Because we push it back, <clears throat> then uh, we run into high retaining wall. If we if we raise the the pool, then we will have higher wall on the front of it. <clears throat> so we leave that as a um, strong consideration. May I ask, um, is the intent to to bring the, the edge of the pool deck closer to the slope? I want to I want to bring it to the um, push, pull uh, it push it back so that the deck does not count labor. It just use well, it sits right on the natural grade and there's perhaps, no it's not necessary. Perhaps what we could do that is to actually um, add a condition to that effect right. versus uh, that's fine. That's fine. Versus addressing you that's know fine. that's fine. Done. <laughs> just. And pull, pull pull the edge of the pool deck closer. I was just trying to not to reduce their deck size, but find a solution. But yeah, then, but then that's that way a, that's it's simpler. That way you can have the, the option to thank do you. it that way. Thank Correct. you. And as far as we are not violating the zoning code. No. Okay. And so that would that would essentially be the whole intent is to actually pull the edge of the pool deck closer in. And so, however, he manages to do that, whether it's you know moving the the pool deck into the grade or whatnot. That would be up to the the applicant. I have a question for staff. I've been uh, motioned by uh, sir. One second. I've been motioned by members of the uh, audience uh, for additional speaking time. Is it my discretion to allow that, as chair? Or? Technically, it's your discretion. However, because of the public um, hearing process, you would be opening up to allow anyone else to repeat. You know. So we have to have a time full are you hearing. Going? Gotcha. Okay. It's it it it. it it's up to the chair's okay. discretion, but it uh, just it, note that you'd be you'd be opening it up to allow everyone else in the public audience the same amount of time. I understand. I am going to use my discretion, even though it's the late hour, to allow one minute uh, 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 for uh, the gentleman who's been raising his hand this time. I believe it's Mr. Smith. No. Smith. Yeah, Mr. Smith, you can come up. Uh, you have one minute to make your comment. Very short. In, in evaluating the size of the house, when you talk about the size of the lot itself, you have to take into consideration the size of the pads in that, in that community. They're all very small pads. I, I, I wish you'd do that. And, and the second comment is you're talking about the soil on the, on the lot. Much of that lot is fill. Are you a soils engineer, sir? You, pardon? Are you a soils engineer, sir? Are you a soils engineer, geological well, I, soils I, engineer? I, I'm having difficulty the question is, hearing what you're saying. The, the, but I'm just trying to point out you, that uh, much of it is filled. Do you have a background in a soils engineering or geological review or engineering? Because we have an engineer report. And yes, I know you did. I've read it. I've yeah, read okay. it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, and then, Mr. Uh, since I've opened it up, I believe Mr. Barry. Just quickly. <laughs> Mike, you know, I understand you're oh, talking about. Sorry, Thank you. Just That's state what your I name wanted for the to know. Tim Barry. Uh, uh, Tim Barry. I'm okay. sorry, we can't hear. Oh. Okay, it's Mr. Order in the court. Yeah, let's and your na start one more time with your name and, for the record. And, and, yes. Tim Barry, 1940 McGinn Drive. Uh, I, I see you're interested in, in pushing that deck back. Uh, my concern is the sort of the downhill side off that pool deck. Now you're going to be putting planters and a and a and a wall. What, what's going to happen to hide that that fascia of the of the pool deck from from below? Well, if you paid attention, what I'm proposing to do is to pushing that back. Right. You would not have a fascia deck. You would not have a fascia. The deck will be pushed back so that it will be right on the grade itself. So you would be seeing hell. Okay. You will not see anything. Gotcha. And my concern now is that the landscaping, which we've addressed with the city 
uh, arborist and, and uh, the urban forestry will review and make sure that everything is done properly. Terrific. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I just would suggest go there. Just go and look at it. We, we have. We, we've we been have. many I, times. I, I've been there, I Thank think, you. twice. Thank you, George. personally. Anyone else who wishes? Anyone else? Uh, I need to open up to anyone else that wishes to speak. Seeing no other uh, speakers, I'm going to close. Um, rebuttal uh, from the Is there a applicant? rebuttal from the applicant? No? Okay. okay. Then I'm going to close the hearing for the, I think, third time. <laughs> and we're going to move now to, uh, we've done a reading of the conditions. So we still have, we would still have two, well, actually we would have, no, we have, we had previously two conditions dealing with the, col the color palette and the landscaping. Now there was the addition of uh, the condition regarding substituting portions of, well, in this case now, would we want to keep the intermittent planner along the pool deck in light of the newest condition, which would be to pull the, the edge of the pool deck towards the slope? I will defer to Mr. Malikian. Who I'm sorry, I'm still reading the soils report. <laughs> the we had we had jotted down a condition with regards to substituting portions of the wrought iron railing on yes. the pool deck with a planter or planters in this well, case. So, so, in light of the fact that you we're now pulling the edge of the pool deck towards. The slope, do I, we I still honestly still think, based on what I just read and looked at. Um, they're going to have bedrock issues. So by us giving them the option and allowing them to have that opportunity to introduce some planter boxes or something, it would allow them to plant whatever they want after they meet with the urban forestry. As it has been designed right now, truly I think the biggest issue, as one of the neighbors brought up, it seems like the soils report is it's the drainage. It's like the, because it's a bedrock, there's nowhere to to uh, percolate, so all the water just percolates down. So there's going to be a lot of there's a lot of emphasis gone into the site drainage and controlling the drains and so on and so forth. So having said that, planting and planter boxes are the best way to control a lot of these drains <coughs> and irrigation that needs to be placed for these trees the new trees that are going in in addition to the site drainage and the deck and the roof drain and all that stuff that is yeah. so i think the answer is yes <laughs> also of course if we are in an el nino pattern hopefully for the next five six years because we really need the water it's going to become even more of a problem especially during construction yeah. so just one of the cons considerations can be that they may based on the amount of site they have, I mean, that, this is a consideration again, that they may create a, a, a basin, a, a some sort of a retention basin or sort. And lar large projects do do that. I don't know if they would have the room for it. I don't know if they would want to create that kind of a thing, being that it is a bedrock. I don't still, I'm, I'm not a civil engineer, so I'm not sure if that's even possible, but that's something to consider. Okay. Um, I think yeah, I was going to say just to summarize I said we have the two staff conditions that were proposed in the staff report and then we've heard two more uh, or yeah conditions the two additional conditions is about pushing the edge of the pool deck so that the edge of the pool deck outside edge of the pool deck more or less aligns with the point of the natural slope in terms of where the cut would occur uh, and then the question Vilia was asking is regards to the previous discussion we had about interspersing some sort of planters along the railings to sort of mitigate the expansiveness of the wrought iron railing. Um, and my sense is that we'd probably want to keep that condition. Right. And then this consideration regarding some sort of retention basin, if possible, for. Right. Okay. okay. Any other items? I'll entertain a motion. For. I'll move to approve with conditions. Oh, but before we before oh. we actually move to oh, the, the design negative. review, we actually need to address the negative declaration. Move on to the negative declaration. So um, there would need to be a motion to, a, yes. to adopt the negative declaration. Yeah. So before we can, uh, as a procedural matter, because this, there's a negative declaration on file for this uh, project, we need to actually um, have a uh, motion, and I'll entertain a motion 
to adopt the negative declaration. I'll move to adopt the negative declaration. A second? I second it. Okay. Okay. Roll call. So in regards necessary. to the environmental, I have a motion by Board Member Malikian, a second by Board Member Benlian. Um, roll call Board Member Malikian? Yes. Board Member Benlian? Yes. And Chair Pro Tem Charchin? Yes. Motion passes 3-0 to adopt the negative declaration. And now back on to the design review. I have, a, I believe there's a motion by Board I, Member. Actually, I just want to add one more condition, one. if I can. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm sorry. I just have to I, do I will, this. I, I just want to make sure. I'm open that. <laughs> yes, it's my motion, so I could do that. Yes. Um, as part of the sign off that they need to get from the plans before it goes to plan check, yes, uh, included with the urban forestry, I would like them to have the SOS report reviewed by uh, engineering and uh, the proposed site just as a precautionary review and make sure that what they're proposing and the so, uh, the SOS report as it's being proposed and what they're recommending they're all consistent and let them recheck it again but just before and just make sure that if there is any revisions that they're proposing it would happen prior to it. but I want to just second recheck on that make sure rather than getting submitted as truly going into the building safety and this is because of uh, of design reviews per I view truly for cut and fill uh, it's, issues it's uh, it's correct? the site condition i mean yes. you read this there's a it's, it's pretty tough so you would you would like to no to have the soils report reviewed by public works just Engineering? just a okay. cursory review of the report versus the site plan and the landscaping whatever they need to for you to sign off before they submit the plans i just need them to have the blessing and say we looked at it it's fine. Go ahead and submit it. We'll do another check or something. It's fine. We can do that. Uh, so with those six conditions, I have a motion by Board Member Malikian. Is there a second? I second it. Second okay. by Board. Roll call. Board Member Benlian? Yes. Board Member Malikian? Yes. Chair Pro Tem Charchin? Yes. Motion passes 3 0 okay. to approve with conditions. Okay. Um, so we actually have a minute to review. We do. Go through. So we will. Go to that next. Um, we have uh, the minute from October. I'm um, sorry, from August 13th, and board members Benley and Charchin, Malikian and Mardian were present. So, okay. So I'll take a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. Okay. okay. And uh, I'm sorry. We did have a motion. You. I'm um, sorry. There was I a apologize. Bit of I know that's noise. Yeah. From the uh, from the audience okay. of members, so we will redo that. I need a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make the motion. Okay. okay. Ms. And I need a second. Board Member Bellion made the motion. A second by Board Member Malikian to approve the minutes of August the 23rd. I'm sorry, August 13th. And uh, so approved. I don't think we need a roll call. Yeah, I was going to say all in favor. Aye. Okay. Aye. And then I'll make my own motion to adjourn, unless there's anything else. Second I, that. At 8.25, I believe, the due time. Adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Okay.